Nobody seems to understand the veracity of the situation. But one day, very soon, everybody's gonna realize. Everybody's gonna realize. I did what I did, and I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. Because they told me to. They told me to break Jeff Hardy in two. They told me to put my hands around the throat of the immortal Hulk Hogan. And they told me to destroy anything that comes in my path. And that continues tonight. You see, they've asked me to pave the way for them. Because when they get here, TNA will never be the same. There will be no stop. That's why there'll be no stop. The monster abyss. And now. TNA Wrestling presents the hottest pay-per-view event of the summer, Victory Road. Tonight, live from Orlando, Florida, Kurt Angle and Angelina Love put their TNA careers at stake. Plus, Ric Flair returns to the ring. Supermix gets the blueprint in the cage. And while we'll crown new tag champions, RVD faces three challengers for the World Heavyweight title, and it's all next at Victory Road. Yes, no less than four championship matches on tonight's nine-bound card as we open Victory Road with an X-Division title showdown where there's two options to win. The opening contest is an ultimate X match for the X Division Championship of the World. Introducing, first of all, the challenger, weighing in at 218 pounds, Brian Kendrick. You know, Mike, I had a chat earlier today with Mr. Kendrick, and he more or less told me he feels it's his faith to win the X Division title tonight via submission. It's, it's, it's his vision that he's going to win this thing tonight with a submission hold, which, you know, it's kind of wacky, but you figured he would grab the uh, title off the X. Introducing his opponent, representing the United Kingdom, the TNA Exhibition Champion of the World, Douglas Williams. Taz Douglas Williams is acrophobic. He's afraid of spiders. No, no. He's afraid of heights or, well, maybe it was ladders. We all saw it Thursday night on Impact. It was Williams' opportunity to prep for tonight in the ladder match. And to me, it just merely exposed his fears. Yeah, well, I, you know, like I said uh, last week, I mean, Douglas told me in confidence about the fear of heights thing, and we saw it full-fledged. But getting back to the submission thing, I mean, if anyone's a submission, submission specialist in this match, it would be the... The exhibition champ right there, Doug Williams. But that man, Brian Kendrick, like I said, he really feels in his mind he has to win with a submission hole. To me, the challenger, Brian Kendrick, has not shown the same limitations as the champ, Douglas Williams. Kendrick can either go high risk or he can go submission. We've seen that Cobra Clutch that he's used to gain victory as we see the X Division Championship belt. It hangs high above the ring. And that's one of the options. Climb the truck. Wait, 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 look at Doug. Make your way across the cables. Look at Doug. And He's... take down the next division title as Williams, I think, try, maybe just trying to overcome his fears, Taz. Right out of the box, but to no avail. Wait, maybe I spoke too soon. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe uh, Douglas is, was trying to attack his fears head on, but you can see that little head shake. A little hesitation and had second thoughts. Decides to take it back to the mat game here against Brian Kendrick, the challenger. Well, that's the strength of the X Division champion, Douglas Williams. He's a specialist in regards to maiming someone's body via submission. And how about the neutralizing position and hold here using the European cravat-type headlock? That's a good counter from Kendrick. I'm dragging his way out of it. 
I see Brian Kendrick bringing it right now. No wasted motion at all. Corner mount by the challenger. Crowd at the impact zone for Victory Road. Counting down the shots, but Williams able to fight back out of the corner. First with the boot, sets him up. Caught him with a quick uppercut and gonna drive him off directly into the corner. Here comes Williams in with the knee. Well, that's what the veteran Douglas Williams is. He's just stopped the momentum of Kendrick. Look at that. Beautiful move with the bridge off the suplex and now has a bridging style chin lock on Kendrick. Yeah, first he hit that snap suplex and then right to the bridge. Trying to supine Kendrick's spine, his back. One of the options to win here, the submission, is you can see referee Brian Hebner right there on the spot. Perfect ring positioning for our official to see if Kendrick would tap out. See how Williams floated back over into a basic front headlock, which is one of the most uh, painful moves anyone can be caught in. It's a basic maneuver, but it hurts like hell. The blows from Kendrick allow him to escape just momentarily. Knee from Williams has fallen up. Oof. An attempt to take Kendrick by the head, but Kendrick a well, step ahead, and here he comes. Wow, middle rope drop kick. Well, went out of his game. Well, go for there. He's going for that that Cobra clutch. That Shinonomaki is Brian Kendrick. Doesn't look like he's really got it set in and cinched the way he wants because of the movement of Williams. Well, what, what hurt Douglas Williams was he went for that. Looked like he was going for that DDT off the second row we've seen Williams use in the past. But, you know, that's not really uh, a good offense, in my opinion, for Douglas Williams. He's not a high flyer. We've seen him get some wins, though, with that move and surprised a lot of us when he went in his own way, high risk, off the middle row. Well, it's well documented, Douglas Williams, what he feels about the way most X Division athletes compete, you know, by putting their bodies on the line and just throwing caution to the win. And Douglas, who I've called the cornerstone of the division, hence he's the champion. He's more of this style. Ground the man, choke out, arm ball, leg ball, whatever it takes. That's a head scissor right there on the head of Kendrick. Want to try and get control of the man's front foot if you can and roll. There you go. You got a shin right there. That's it. Got the foot and you're rolling. You snap your head out and you're in good shape. There you go. head out just like Taz proposed. And then immediately goes with the crossface shots. That's, that's like a lot of them. But he hit him 10, 12 times with the crossfaces. Going again for that, that Cobra clutch. Oof! Almost like an electric chair, but different. Pretty Almost, good, but different. Pretty good game plan here for Williams, who's been prepared for those Cobra clutch type submission attempts by Kendrick in the early going. Well, this is where, uh, you know, the, the exhibition champion, Douglas Williams, is the most dangerous. You know, he knows how to slow the pace down, which is to his advantage. This is not good right now for Kendrick, man. Look at this submission hold here. Might get a tap out. Hangman style move here, cranking back, and the referee, Hebner, has got to make sure that it's not a choke hold. Kendrick able to drop oh. down and then caught him with a kick right on the button. Kendrick so... Quick off his feet, tremendous athleticism. Hell Ben again on getting that choke, that Cobra clutch. This time Williams able to back him up into the corner to break the hold. X Division champ with a head of steam. Whoa, taken up and over and down to the floor. Well now, I'll tell you what, Brian Kendrick has an opportunity here to climb up one of those steel thrusts and scoot across that gigantic Rex. X, I should say, above the ring, but he's not doing it. Round kick to the skull. Williams heads to the corner and thought he was going to try and make his way up the truss, but Kendrick again. cuts him off. Going to go for the Cobra Clutch again. Elbows oh. from the champ, block the hole. It kind of looks like uh, Douglas Williams, his legs are caught up in the ropes. Not sure if that's legal. Referee should kind of break the hold. That right there is definitely not legal. Uh oh, well, you talked about the opening with Williams hung upside down in the corner. Oh, here we go, Kendrick now going to get climbing. Going to be able to capitalize. Kendrick trying to push off from the post in the corner to try and get some speed and momentum to go up the truss. But dangerous here, Mike. This is dangerous grounds for both men. They're high up there. Oh, whoa! 
Bad landing for both, worse for Kendrick. Back suplex by the X Division champion. Desperation move by the X Division champ, but with the positioning of both champion and challenger, what else could he do at that point? Hey, look, you gotta do what you gotta do to retain your title. Gotta be careful now, Kendrick. You don't want Douglas Williams sucking in a submission right about now. Remember, two options to win. Submission or climb the truss. Make your way across the cables and take down the X Division championship belt. Nice counter there by Kendrick. And now floating back into that, into the Cobra Clutch. He's got it. Got the legs in, too. He has been hell-bent on winning this match with the Cobra Clutch. And, you know, his confidence level has risen. The way that he made Williams tap out several times on impact in the past month. Well, I, you know, this Mike, if that's, if he's still hanging on, is Kendrick. See, that's the thing with Kendrick. He's kind of out there. He's off-color type guy. And, of course, in his mind, he really sees this match, you know, being victorious in this match with a submission. But there's other openings for Kendrick to climb up there and grab the exhibition title, but he sees submission. Almost like he's falling victim to that tunnel vision yeah. off the success he had, but now with Williams down, Kendrick's gonna try and climb. He's got some space here, and that's really the key. Get that space from your opponent. Well, look, look, remember now, Hello. he's got that fear of heights, Douglas Williams, but it looks like he's maybe breaking that fear. He's going up pretty quick. Talk about dangerous position. High above the arena floor. Oh, my God. Right across the top rope. Kendrick crashes down. Look, look First the rope, then the arena floor. Why'd he come down? I, I guess well, you can see, he's afraid. Yeah, that, the, the fear of heights, and maybe at the same time, Williams thinks to himself, with Kendrick down, now I can beat him with a submission. Now I don't have to climb. I think both these guys need some psychiatric help. Douglas needs it for the fear of heights deal. And Kendrick, just because he's Kendrick. What is that? What? He's got the, is that a glove? It's a white glove. Oh, he's from England. They do the white glove Sure, stuff. that's what it is. He's paint brushing him with the white glove. Come on! Are those batting gloves? <laughs> then takes Kendrick and drives him into the side of the ring. Challenger down and the champion looking around. Got your option to beat him with a submission move or to climb up and take down your X Division title. And I, don't, I don't understand why Douglas Williams. It's like he's uh, going through the yeah, thought no, no, process there yeah. of what's best. And well, I, they're not batting gloves, they're climbing gloves, Taz. Climbing gloves. Uh, I guess that's when he gets up there by the X. If he does get there, his, his uh, palms of his hands, hands won't get ripped up. And give him a better grip as well when so he makes his way across the steel cables. There is such thing as climbing gloves? Sure. Well, there we go. Douglas Williams, he's pretty high up there. Got the fear of heights working against him. Well, but he's, he's scooting doing, across pretty quick. He's doing great. But Kendrick. Kendrick in pursuit. Here he comes. It's dangerous, dangerous grounds here. Good God. God, be careful here. Danger aspect of this ultimate well, X match on display oh. as they crash down. It looked like it was a bad landing, like Kendrick shot a half Nelson, like he was going again for a rear choke. Probably the Cobra Clutch, I would assume, but the weight of both men and slipping off uh, that X. Oh man, no, no, look at Kendrick's getting, he got hooked here. Submission hold applied by Williams. Legs cinched in as well. I think that landing just took Kendrick out. I think I'm with you. That's one. Two. If the arm drops out, third time and it did. That's three. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner via submission and still TNA X Division Champion of the World, Douglas Williams. Well, at the end of the day, Douglas Williams went to what he knows best, and that's submission, and it worked. But I'll tell you, that landing was bad by Kendrick. Let's take a look at what, some of the action from this matchup for the X Division Championship. You said from the beginning that Brian Kendrick, I told you, told me to today, he was gonna win this thing and win the title with a submission.
was a battle. I mean, Douglas Williams got past that fear of heist thing. Then they went up to the ever dangerous top of that X. And I'm telling you, look right here. It looks like Kendrick tries to hook that half Nelson, which is the beginning of a rear choke, depending on what type you're using, which I think was going to be a Cobra Clutch. And Douglas Williams hooks it in. Kendrick couldn't even, couldn't even tap things out. And there you see the victor in our opening matchup. Douglas Williams gets the submission win, and got to agree with you, Taz, it had to be that bad landing that enabled him to slap on the submission. And the referee with the three count, raising and dropping the arm of Brian Kendrick. Yeah, you can see Kendrick right there. He's in a bad way. Got some stats. Looks like it's smell smelling salts, salts, right? Yeah. Yep. Trying to revive the challenger. He landed hard. Oh, it's a dangerous type match, man. It's it high up. is. It's Mike Today and Taz. We welcome you to this Victory Road event where, as we've just witnessed, Douglas Williams retains the X Division title in our opener. Well, yeah, Douglas Williams retained by the skin of his teeth. But later on tonight in our main event for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship, our champion, Rob Van Dam, he might have a little bit of a tough and going. He's got three, not one, not two, but three of the top contenders here in TNA gunning for his championship. Well, it's certainly a tough position for RVD. He's established himself to all of us as a fighting champ, but I want to get your opinions on the three challengers, starting with Jeff Hardy. Well, Jeff Hardy, I mean, look, he's been there, done that. This, this man could be a world champion on any night, Jeff Hardy, so it could happen tonight for Hardy. How about number two, Mr. Anderson? Mr. Anderson, in my view, he's a wild card. You never know what Anderson's agenda is, you know, is and stuff. You never know what he's going to do. Speaking of wild cards, the monster abyss doesn't get any wilder than that. Well, the unpredictable abyss, the monster abyss the completely dangerous on a tear abyss he could walk out of here new champ tonight abyss ladies and gentlemen before brother ray and brother devon square off against jesse neal in a three-way dance we're going to send it to christy hemi she's going to get pre-match comments from team 3d we're here at victory road and brother ray you may have been let me see if i can read into that stupid little brain of yours you're gonna ask me about Jesse Neal and my brother Devon. Jesse Neal is a failure. Just like your addition of Playboy, a failure. Jesse Neal is a failure to his fans, his family. He's a failure to his dead friend. He's a failure to everyone. But most of all, Jesse's gonna be a failure tonight and a failure in the wrestling business. Hey, I'm talking over here. My brother Devon, it's not in my brother Devon's best interest to lay a hand on me. I made Devon. Without me, Devon is nothing. Devon could never survive in this industry by himself. Are you gonna cry? Are you gonna cry, Christy? Cry. I like to watch girls no, like I'm you cry. cry. Shut up! No. I am Brother Ray. I am Team 3D, and after tonight, I'll be victorious at Victory Road. I need to ask you for your blessing on something tonight. I got offered a match. It's against you. Check out the set on Jesse. You know what? Good. That's the way we taught you. Just be prepared. You gotta have eyes in the back of your head out there. Don't trust me and Devon either. Because we'll turn on you too one day. Hey man, the student just took the teacher to school. You getting too big for your own head, kid. Slam anniversary, Jesse. Teacher versus the student. If you got a problem with me, have the balls to settle it like a man. I'm gonna have to, you know, fight and, and stay in the middle of them because uh, if not, it could be an ugly war, and that's one war I don't want to be caught up in. I brought you into this business, and I'm the one who could take you out. Wow, that's Tommy Dreamer. That's the individual of violence. And that distraction, Jesse was able to take advantage of the shocking arrival of Tommy Dreamer here. Bruised and beaten from head to toe, but the student, Jesse Neal, beats the teacher. You need to get your damn head on straight and leave that kid alone. You ever seen this kind of a situation between Devon and Brother Ray? I warned you. Devon! I told you to leave that kid alone. I'll promise you, and our father's good man, do not test me. He promised he wouldn't allow Brother Ray to interfere in this match. Jesse's in trouble here, Mike. 
Was there that momentary distraction for Jesse Neal that was caused by Brother Ray? For the past few weeks, things have gotten to be a little bit out of control. What the hell is your problem with Jesse? He's nothing but a disrespectful punk, and now my problem is with you because you're an unloyal partner. At Victory Road, the match is me versus Jesse versus you. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is a three-way matchup. Introducing, first of all, from New York City, Brother Ray. Things that big don't hide well. Hi. Introducing competitor number two, about to make his way to the ring, weighing in at 230 pounds, Jesse Neal. Jesse, you better look behind you, buddy, but it's about to get lit up. You can see it coming. I think this might be one case where the teacher is one step ahead of the oh. student. Simple little thing like that. Hiding, <laughs> just attacking from behind. Wow. Oh, here comes the intriguing part. Introducing competitor number three, Brother Diva. Remember when Brother Ray issued the challenge for this three-way match, including Devon, he wanted to find out where Brother Devon's loyalties lie. Yeah, well, where, where, uh, where's Brother Devon at? That's the question. No appearance at all of Brother Devon. Well, Jesse Neal's just getting whipped out here by Brother Ray. Wait a minute, I'm getting word, Taz. We got the camera backstage oh. yet? Is the camera in position? What the hell is this? Brother, let me get it open the door. Hold in, big shot. Hey. Somebody open the damn door! Bubba! Bubba, open the damn door! Oh, I guess it sounded like Devon's voice. Devon's not out here. Hello! It's Team 3D locker room, and Devon's locked in there. I guess we could assume that, uh. Bubba Ray locked him in there, I guess. Just to trap Jesse? What do you think? Who knows what's going through Brother Ray's mind, but he had some kind of a game plan. You saw it from the moment he came out during his entrance. You don't think Jesse would have locked Devon in there? I don't think that. I think so. Just narrowing it down, you've got to fear with Brother Ray. I'll tell you what, I think that uh, Brother Ray challenged Brother Devon to be part of this three-way match, and maybe Brother Ray didn't want any part of his, uh, his own brother. Can I say the word brother anymore? That's no, I don't think know. so, brother. He's what cross a face yeah, that time. Nice cross face by Brother Ray. Taz, do you think? Oh, my wow. God. Drops down with all the weight behind that elbow. Do you think when the Navy vet, Jesse Neal, who survived the bombing of the USS Cole, when he joined 3D's wrestling school as a tribute to his fallen shipmate, his fallen friend, did he ever figure he'd be in this position? Well, I don't wow. know. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Oh. Good God. Well, I can't answer what, what, you know, what was going through Jesse Neal's mind when he, when he joined Team 3D's Wrestling Academy. I can tell you what right now from experience, his chest is stinging and it hurts like hell from that shot by Brother Ray. Been there. Got it. Not fun. And he tries to fight back, but to no avail. Got one shot that barely caught Brother Ray and then... Brother Ray answers, big shot to the top of the head with the elbow, now stalking oh. and slapping. What about Brother Devon? The guy's locked back there in his locker room. It's a two by four across the door. And Brother Ray is just doing what he's got to do right now to Jesse Neal. Someone's got to get Devon out of there, I guess, right? Now three-way dances. All of a sudden, this one-on-one -on -one matchup, momentum going as he comes off the ropes. But Jesse Neal able to avoid that shot. Avoid that contact and there's some striking power of his own. Whoa, whoa! Look at that height on that backdrop. Jesse, 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 
A lot of live audience here off TNA fans in the impact zone. Big time behind Jesse Neal. Yeah, no question who they're supporting tonight oh. at Victory Road. Well, you know, I could see, uh, oh, I could see Brother Ray's point on this whole thing here because, hey, listen, you know, when you train somebody, you feel like they're being disrespectful and they're getting too big for their britches. I could see his point on that. Well, I mean, that's the perception oh, from whoa, Brother whoa, Ray. Whoa, whoa. All right, well, this is the part of the show, Mike, when you tell me, come on, Taz, you don't know what's going on. You don't know why Dream is here, or Rhino, or Richards, or Raven. You're not going to play, uh, what's his name, Larry King, or nothing like that, or Dan Rather? Because I don't know what they're doing here. I've been saying it for weeks. Well, you know, I, I wasn't going to bring it up tonight, because every time I bring it up for the past couple weeks, I, I see just what a sensitive subject it is. Because I have no clue what these men are doing here, what they've been doing. You can see Brother Ray seems like he has no clue what the hell they're doing here either. Oh! What a spear! Distraction! Got him! Oh! oh just two. The distraction of the entrance of the former ECW4 enables Jesse Neal to take over. Intensity by Jesse Neal. Ground and pound, full mount right there. Jesse Neal saw the opportunity, took advantage of it. Kudos to him. Cut off with the Brother Ray elbow. Looks like uh, Brother Ray channeling Stan Hansen right there. <laughs> Everything but the cowbell as he rolls out, and instead of that, he's going to bring the steel chair into play. Yeah, well, meanwhile, back on the ranch, it seems like Brother Devon's still locked up. I get, well, well, there's Shannon Moore. That's the partner of, Inc., uh, partner of Jesse Neal, Ink Inc., the other member. Oh, oh my God. And Slick Johnson trying to get Shannon Moore to the back. And never saw that vicious and violent well, steel if, if, chair if to the, the back of Jesse If Neal. the referee would just look at the chair and see how banged up it is, you could see that it hit somebody's body. And Slick had to hear it, but he didn't see it. I get your point. And Brother Ray challenging Shannon Moore to come in and join the battle as well while the referee's trying to get him to the back. Well, this might be a little bit of a moment here that Jesse needs to regroup. My man got blasted with that steel chip. Uh oh. Hey, brother D gonna get out. Oh, buddy, here we go. Coming down the ramp with purpose. Uh -huh. And what a look on his face as the two brothers go face to face. Nose to nose. History making moment. These two men are gonna go to blows.
Victory Road. I am going to reclaim my TNA Knockouts title against you, Madison Rain. She's got her comeback completely mapped out. Oh, she's gonna hurt. She's gonna hurt. Don't do it! Oh my God! Oh. This isn't about wrestling. This isn't about winning or losing. It's about Angelina wanting to take back everything she thinks was taken from her. Well, you can see this is very personal between these two young ladies. Angelina gonna bring the steel chair into play. Two down, one to go. Well, you've got to admit the strategy of Angelina Love has been executed to perfection. At Victory Road, I will become the first ever four-time TNA Knockouts champion. And you, little honey, are gonna be lying in a hospital bed with your two little BFFs. I don't need Lacey, <laughs> and I don't need Velvet. If I'm putting my TNA Knockouts title on the line, what are you risking? Why don't you put your career on the career line? On the line. You got it. Can the career killer do it again? Can Madison Rain make it three for three? Or will Angelina Love become knockout champion? Angelina Love looks to take back what's hers when she challenges Madison Rain for the TNA Knockouts Championship. It's time for the females to take the spotlight at Victory Road. And while the champ puts up her title, the challenger is putting up her career. Gonna preview this title match with this knockout's tail of the tape and the bullet points as Madison Rain on a roll since becoming the champ, forcing both Tara and Roxy into early retirement. Angelina Love's scoreboard stands at two down, one to go. After defeating, destroying Lacey Von Erich and Velvet Sky, Victory Road focused totally on Madison Rain. Yes, the former leader of the beautiful people agreed to put her career at stake tonight in exchange for this title shot. But remember, if Madison's beautiful people partners illegally interfere, then Madison Rain not only disqualified, but Angelina Love becomes the knockout champion. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is a career versus title match for the TNA Knockouts Championship. Introducing, first of all, the challenger from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Angelina Love. Well, it's safe to say, Mike, that this hot young lady here, Angelina Love, the former leader of the beautiful people, she has just been taking people out, I mean, especially when it comes to beautiful people members. She's been on a violent tear. You're talking about those, those DDTs oh. on the steel chair? Yo! Yep, hold on. Okay. What was that again? I was about to say, let the pigeons loose, but you ruined it. God! What were you saying? Time. You no. got time. Right now. Hit it now. No. What about your parrot? And now, introducing her opponent. She is the TNA Knockouts Champion, representing the beautiful people, Madison Rain! Say what you want about Madison Rain. I like to say nice things about her, but she has definitely been some kind of champion, taking on all covers and doing a good job of it. I think surprising to many people, the effectiveness of Madison Rain, the elimination of the careers of two, and then agreeing, yes, she'll put her championship belt on the line tonight at Victory Road, but she wanted something in return, and that's why Angelina Love is putting her career at stake. Well, we will see how this unfolds and who leaves with the knockout title. Now, can we just get more entrances to this level? I mean, but I'm, I used to just wipe my feet on the apron and get in the ring. I didn't want to do that stuff, though, you know what I mean? Any chance we could turn the pigeons loose again here? I guess that ship sailed, huh? <laughs> what a show, bro. I, I, guess, I guess that bird's what flown. A show. I guess that bird's flown the coop. <laughs> Uh, well, you can see there's no confidence problem in the champion, Madison Rain. And I was surprised Thursday night on Impact when Angelina Love countered the situation, asking for that career being put up, did Madison Rain? Once Angelina said that she accepted, but with the interference of the beautiful people, right. would lead to a disqualification. Yeah, Madison, didn't see, she didn't sweat it in no, the least. Madison could care less. I mean, again, that's the confidence. I don't know, who knows, she might have something up her sleeve. You never know what matters, but I don't know what that could be. 
But right now, I just think Madison has just been doing a great job as TNA Knockouts champion, and she's just loaded with confidence. And right now, Angelina is loaded with aggressiveness and looking good. I mean, you can't put yourself in, in any more of a, a high-stakes situation than Angelina Love with her career at stake here. Especially with someone who's just ended careers of someone like Roxy and Tara. Taking down Madison outside, tosses her in with the realization she's got to pin her inside the whoa, ring whoa, to whoa. get the title and gets two before Madison gets the shoulder roll. That was a teeny bit more than two there, too. That was uh, as close as I thought it would be. Another spear. There goes Angelina. Look at this. Right back on top again with the leg hook, this time for two. Well, tenacious is Angelina. And totally focused on the task at hand. We saw it from the opening bell. Just relentless on offense. Got Madison up and then the rake oh, of the oh. eyes. Momentarily going to turn things around here in oh. favor of the champ. What a shot in the corner. I mean, these two girls, right or wrong, Mike, they used to be BFFs, right? Well, they were aligned with the oh, beautiful no, people. I mean, it was... No FF at the end, right? Both forever? I don't think so. It's gone. Yeah, right? gone. And you remember Lacey Von Eric in to replace Angelina Love, and that's when that whole situation went south. Well, right now, Madison Rain just... Oh! Bringing big time violence. It's a, such a mean streak and such a gorgeous young lady. That's how you got to be, man. You're the knockouts champ. You're at the top of the mountain, and all these ladies are coming for you. Goes for the cover off the neck breaker and the knees and gets two on Angelina. And you see Angelina favoring the back of her head after being taken down, crashing down to the canvas. Nice setup for a move right here. Boom, bing, pop, boom. Look at this. Scissor stop repeatedly. Yeah. We got a replay of that. Huh? Well, Angelina might not know where she is right now. Her forehead was getting smashed into the mat. The champ has weakened the challenger here. Well, nice counter. Look at Angelina. Beautiful counter. Dropped her with the clothesline and trying to regroup is Angelina Love. Oh! No. That might Jaw be the opening. Breaker might work. That could be the opening that Angelina needed to slow down Madison. Well, you know, her career is on the line as we pointed out a couple of times here, meaning Angelina. And remember the mindset of Angelina leading to this match was to take out Velvet, take out Lacey right. without regards to winning or losing. Didn't care about being disqualified in a match. Well, Not going to be the case here tonight. You're going to have to beat Madison Rain. Well, Madison's doing pretty good. All by her lumps, lonesome, got to say. No! Uh oh. <laughs> and now Madison goes outside. Oh, yeah. Going to introduce the steel chair. Looks but like maybe Madison wants to do what, what Angelina's been doing. Which he did to Velvet and Lacey, but referee Andrew Thomas trying to stop. Oh, my God! Was that the Botox kick right there? Was that the injection into the chair? Oh, there was some sort of an injection. I don't know if it was Botox or what it was. <laughs> what, the hell? what the hell is this? What? What? Right in the middle of the match? We had someone on a motorcycle coming right into the impact zone? Well, that, you... Look, Angelina, she won. Uh, I guess she was looking maybe to get the disqualification. I guess she's figuring that's either Velvet or Lacey, one of the members of the beautiful people. You can't really tell. And referee Andrew Thomas, that's what he's doing. He's checking to see oh. if it was Velvet or Lacey because that would be a disqualification that would... What, what? to try and get a ruling here from Andrew Thomas. He's talking to our ring announcer, Jeremy Borash. Oh, what did this Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. Referee Andrew Thomas has ruled that as a result of outside interference by the beautiful people, the winner and new TNA Knockouts oh. champion, 
Angelina Long. Wait a minute. Outside interference by the beautiful people. How does he know that's a member of the beautiful people? She's got a freaking black helmet on her head. Well, I guess the situation here is he's awarding the title to Angelina because he's assuming that it's either Velvet Sky or Lacey Von Eric, and he doesn't want to be shown up. Assume? You don't want to assume. You know what happens when you assume? Yeah, but the Madison just lost the title. And... Well, whoever that is on that motorcycle, Madison's obviously friends with her. Well, she likes it. Yeah, the mysterious figure. Oh, we got a Velvet new... Sky or Lacey Von Eric with Madison. Leave the impact zone on the motorcycle, and you're right, a celebration time for Angelina Love. She just made history. First ever four-time knockout champion in TNA. Well, thanks to the stipulation that was put in this match, via disqualification, I still personally, in my opinion, I don't agree with the call. We don't know who the hell that was on that motorcycle. Do you think Andrew Thomas, when he was looking into the motorcycle helmet? He don't. He didn't, didn't see nothing. How do you know that? Hey, look at him. He don't know what he's talking about. How's he know who it is? Come on. Whatever. Well, congratulations. I know, I know. Let me send it to Christy right. with one of RBD's three challengers for the title, Mr. Anderson. I'm standing here with my guest, Mr. Anderson, who will be facing Jeff Hardy, the Monster Abyss. Christy, and Christy, 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 Christy. Everything's always Christy. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I love you. Okay. You know, Christy, I bet you thought that uh, Mr. Anderson was going to come here and say something cute and witty and funny, like, you know, like... Tonight, the enigmatic assholes square off. It's going to be a battle of epic proportions. It's going to be like the left butt cheek faces the right butt cheek. And, you know, in, in fact, um, if you don't mind, I'd like to kind of maybe show a little uh, <laughs> visual representation here. Uh, if you wouldn't mind just turning around here, you know, I just want to show everybody at home. Oh, I just want to show, don't you think that'd be a cool visual, like the, the left butt cheek and the right butt cheek and the dead? I, I mean that in the most professional way. Okay, well, f all right, forget it. Uh, well, I could point out the fact that I also face the monster abyss. But I, except I'm going to be like, uh, like, Dr. Frankenstein, I'm going to control that monster. <laughs> but that's uh, that's that's kind of lame, right? I mean, like, really cheesy and corny. And I would never say something like that. Nor would I ever say something like uh, Rob Van Dam's hopes and dreams and aspirations of staying TNA World Heavyweight Champion are tonight going to go up in. Uh, <laughs> But, but, but at exactly 4.21 today, I had an epiphany, a realization that, you know what, folks, ladies and gentlemen, we have an opportunity to do something really special here tonight. We have an opportunity to come in as just ordinary, everyday assholes. Yeah. But after it's all said and done, after the dust settles and the smoke clears, whether it's for medicinal purposes or otherwise. And we have an opportunity to become World Heavyweight Champion Assholes! You, uh, you, you sure you don't want to do that visual thing? Asshole! 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 The following contest is Tag Team Action. Introducing, first of all, they are the team of Kazarian and the Phenomenal, AJ Styles. Time for these two to prove themselves. This is the match that the Nature Boy Ric Flair booked. He told Styles and Kazarian on impact. I'm going to put you in a match at Victory Road against the tag team, and neither Styles or Kazarian know who they're going to face in this match, Taz, with the idea being that they prove themselves to the Nature Boy in an effort to take that step in becoming part of Ric Flair's new group, 
fortune. Well, listen, it's you know, pretty obvious. It's going to be tough to be ready for a team that you don't even know you're facing. Kind of tough to prepare for that, especially the fact that AJ and Kazarian, let's be honest, they don't really see eye to eye. You know what I mean? They're kind of competitive with each other. Time so. to find out who the mystery opponents are. Introducing their opponents, first of all, from Cardiff, Wales, the TNA Global Champion, Colt Freak Rob Terry. Well, that's an obstacle. <laughs> The longest reigning global champion in TNA history, the freak Rob Terry, won half of the tag team that well, Ric Flair signed for Styles and Kazarian to face. Now, who is Rob Terry's partner? Right now, AJ Kazarian, you can see they're trying to draw Jack, trying to figure out, come up with a quick game plan. Who is it? Introducing his tag team partner from the Isle of Samoa, weighing in at 280 pounds, the Samoan Submission Machine, Samoa. Good thing, oh. Good thing AJ's is wearing that robe. I think he just peed his pants. <laughs> Styles and Kazarian, none too pleased with the handiwork of the Nature Boy Ric Flair. I'll tell you what, Ric Flair wanted to challenge AJ Styles and Kazarian. I think he just put a big challenge in front of his boys big time. Freak Rob Terry, the global champion and the Samoan submission machine. Joe, wow. Tough test to be sure, but just off the top of my head, I can't recall where Rob Terry and Samoa Joe might have been a tag team before. Of course, by the same token, the way that Styles and Kazarian have not been getting along, I'm not sure that, that their partnership could be any better than this team who's never teamed before. Well, that's a good point, Mike. I agree with that. But uh, I think it's, you know, from where I sit, which is to your right, I think that um, Samoa Joe and Rob Terry, they don't really have much in common, except they're both big. So I, I don't know how much chemistry is going to be there. And to your point, I don't know how much chemistry is going to be between AJ and Kazarian either. For AJ Styles and Kazarian, it has been all about trying to please Ric Flair. And in the process, we've seen that wedge being driven between the two. Oh. As we pointed out, week in and week out on Impact, Ric Flair is building a new group. Shades of the form of the great faction called the Four Horsemen. Look at that, how George is standing, Kazarian. It's going to be called Fortune, and Flair has yet to pick a member. He's watching everybody. Styles wants nothing to do with the freak. Just pumped his head. Look at that. He's palming a basketball with the head of Kazarian. Oh God, look. Talk about stout. Talk about a powerhouse. Not much movement from the freak Rob Terry on that shoulder block by Kazarian coming off, oh. and now it's Joe's turn. Rapid <laughs> fire right. Joe's just tagging. Watch out! Oh. Saw AJ coming around the corner. Drilled him with the boot. Gonna roll Kazarian into Terry. You know, they may not need much chemistry at this point. Oh, you're right. Both men, brute force right now. Because one of the most dangerous men in the industry today, Samoa Joe. Supreme striking power in the corner. First the punches, then the kicks. Nobody home. Well, that's smart. Keep your head in the game by Joe. Home field advantage in the corner of Samoa Joe. He didn't have to do much for Kazarian just to drop himself. Oh, not a legal man is AJ again. <laughs> a tentative look on the face of AJ Styles as he enters to face the freak Rob Terry. Uh, it's a tough deal in my view. For, for Kazarian and AJ Styles, because listen, Rob Terry and Samoa Joe, they had time to prepare. They knew who they were going to face. So they came up with some sort of a game plan, unlike Kazarian and AJ. Whoa! 
I think their game plan should be because Aaron and AJ stay in the ring if they can. What the hell is this? Oh my God! Air Samoa! <laughs> Good God, it's like a 767! Gotta take another look at this one, guys, in the truck, if you can roll it up for us. As the crowd at Victory Road goes absolutely nuts for the Samoa Joe suicide dive and an elbow shot thrown in for good measure. Excellent athleticism from a damn near 300 pound man. Watch out, watch out! Oh! Freight train in the corner. <laughs> Follow up kick connects. AJ looked like he had a conniption there for a minute. <laughs> Cracked in the back of the head. One would suspect Ric Flair none too pleased to this point with the performance of Styles and Kazarian. Hey, you can hear our live audience here yeah, motivating Samoa Joe. Joe is going to kill you, Chance, and that can motivate you. Oof! I've heard a few of those in my day. Watch out. Oh, Slingshot man. in with the DDT by Kazarian. Going to go for the quick pin here on Joe. Uh, referee Slick Johnson turned and Wait, almost I, almost as if the yeah. light bulb just went off for both AJ Styles and Kazarian. I think maybe the realization set into these guys that they're going to have to work together. Well, yeah, they got to try to be a cohesive unit. Right now they're looking okay. They slowed down the massive momentum of Samoa Joe. Yeah. Yeah. AJ. Get him. And now they cut off the ring. As Kazarian turns things over to Styles, and now they've got Joe on the defensive, and they got him in their, their side of town. And AJ Styles, I mean, listen, AJ, you want to talk about credibility. You got to talk about AJ Styles. I don't care if you like the, the attitude that he has since that he's aligned with Ric Flair months back. AJ Styles is one of the most amazing athletes you will ever see in the world in this business. Guy is just so damn good. Currently ranked number four in the TNA Top Contender rankings. Samoa Joe is number six. And remember, we will have updated rankings for you this Thursday night on Impact, as we will after every TNA pay-per-view event. Oh! Kazarian illegally comes flying in to knock Terry off. Oh, my wow. God! That was, wow. he, he just took Styles' legs and flew him around. AJ on top of Joe for two. That was pretty good teamwork right there, even though he did it right in front of the ref. That DDT, man, Samoa Joe really landed in a nasty way. And suddenly, a Styles. Styles, a Styles yeah, clash. Styles and Kazarian seeing oh. eye to eye. Roll through. He's going to go for the clash, oh. but Joe caught him with the big, big leg and then follows up close line miss. Hey, and they didn't. Wow. You can see Joe's trying to shake that off. Got right to the clip. top of the head. Oh, man! Oh, he did shake it off. What a Yorinagi! AJ Styles! My man almost went right through the ring! Whew, that was nasty. The freak Rob Terry walks in, and Joe's got to get him in! Global heavyweight champ. Fresh man in. Elbow for Kazarian gets cut off by the Styles boot, but then overpowers AJ in the corner. Doesn't take much for Rob Terry to, to lift someone off their feet. It's just so damn strong. Whoa, whoa! See what I'm saying? A pure power game. Oh, my God. Oh, my of God. the freak with the gorilla press slam. Styles high overhead. Oh! Looks like he got shot out of a cannon. Missed with the kick. Kazarian goes oh, cross man. body. Wow. Tossed him away with ease in the yeah. fall away slam. How about instead of fall away, how about fly away slam? <laughs> Better description. Freak Rob Terry, global champ, could do whatever the hell he wants right now to AJ Styles. Holding AJ up. Drops him to the shoulder. Directly down to the canvas. Two, and Kazarian the double sledge. He broke it up just in time. Gotta wonder what the nature bar Ric Flair is thinking about as he gets ready to compete tonight against Jay Lethal. What is he thinking of Kazarian and AJ's performance here? That's what I'm wondering. Wow, Joe with those chops. Boy, it's been peaks and valleys for Styles and Kazarian. 
Oh! Not good early, not good too lately. Pretty good in the middle. Might be muscle buster, which is going to be pretty looks bad. Like. Pretty, whoa, whoa. Who's this flying down the ramp? First of all, I don't think Joe's the legal man whoa, whoa, whoa. anyway. That's Desmond Wolf. Desmond Wolf the hell is pulling it? Joe out. I mean, you can only presume he's trying to get back in the, the favor of the Nature Boy Ric Flair to become a member of Fortune as Kazarian catches Joe. Referee Slick Johnson has lost all control here. Referee's got his back turned. Now Wolf is in the ring. Watch out! Oh! Freak drops him with the clothesline. Kazarian on one side. AJ on the other. Watch your back, Rob. Watch your back! Oh! Flying forearm to the back of the head. Doesn't take him down amazingly. Catch him from behind. Catch him from in front. That time with the drop kick. Look at Kazarian. Oh, my God. That leg drop right across the jaw. Watch out! Oh, my God! Oh! 450 pin and got the win! Ladies and gentlemen, the winners of the match, the team of Kazarian and the Phenomenal. See that Kazarian and AJ kind of got caught up in a moment for a second and <laughs> was celebrating. Desmond Wolf. You might be right, Mike. He's trying to curry favor with Ric Flair. Wolf had his chance to be part of Fortune, was not victorious in a match. And, oh, man. Whoa, buddy. <laughs> the open hand slaps the rights and the lefts. From Samoa Joe and Desmond oh Wolf. Oh my God! Oh my God! That's a muscle buster, Desmond. That don't be a muscle buster, a bone buster, a ball buster, a blood buster, <laughs> any kind of buster you want. Wolf's in a bad way. AJ and Kazarian get the win, but the Samoan submission machine has the last word on Desmond Wolf. She's so pretty, and she's all mine. Sorry, Christiani, but this is my girl. Oh, no, no. Come here. You're going to want to hear what I have to say. Because you see, they gave me the blueprint for this. They gave me the nails, the wood, the know-how, and the power to continue to pave the way for them. Because, Christy, when they get here, they are taking over. Tonight, my path continues of destruction, and me and my girl will do just that as we win the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. And tonight, RVD, Jeff Hardy, and Mr. Anderson, you're gonna find out just what a bitch my girl can be. <laughs> well, you know, I think someone needs to tell the Poster Abyss that his girl, that weapon, that two by four with those spikes and nails in it, it's not gonna be legal tonight in the four-way match for the TNA World title. So uh, I don't even know if Abyss needs that thing, but it's his girl. That is one sick weapon and we've seen yeah. it for over a month, this monster abyss. He's on the loose, he's totally out of control. And speaking of control, that's what our next matchup at Victory Road is all about. Because this is the opportunity for big Supermax Hernandez to get his former World Tag Team Champion partner, the Blueprint Matt Morgan, inside the steel cage. And listen, the arrogant, the gigantic Blueprint Matt Morgan, this guy's been running. He's doing his damage and he's running away. Yeah, now you got a steel cage. Now, her, you know, Hernandez has Morgan trapped in the steel cage, so I don't know how Morgan's gonna run. We'll gotta see what happens. You imagine Super Mech sitting on the sidelines for three months, not as a result of what an opponent did to him, but his own partner, the blueprint Matt Morgan. I know, Taz, you have been out for extended period as a result of an injury. What do you think is going through the head of Hernandez? Uh, yeah, frustration. When you're sitting home on an injury, you're frustrated. You're seeing your peers compete on TV, and it's frustrating to you, and just build the sense of urgency that you got to get in the ring. So I just think, you know, Hernandez is kind of like very combustible right now and can't wait to get in that cage with, with Matt Morgan. No question that revenge is on the mind of Supermax. 
it's Hernandez. It's the blueprint Matt Morgan. It's up next at Victory Road. And let's preview that matchup in the steel cage via this video. Hernandez and Morgan want to be the best. We're damn sure going to go down in the wrestling history books as the physically most dominating tag team of all time. It's pretty obvious to see that Hernandez and Matt Morgan are not on the same page. Oh! No! The carbon footprint just moments after Hernandez had defeated Beer Money to keep the goal. Blueprint's got him in his sight. Oh, God! Super Max is back. What goes around comes around. Pure raw strength from Super Max Hernandez. I like what I see so much, brother. Those two are going to go at it. It's Slammiversary. I'm making that match right now. With the bad blood between these two in pursuit of the blueprint. Oh, wait a minute, Mike. Look at this. He's going to do it. Oh! The referee caught the bullet, man. Oh, Morgan just bailing. This is not over by any means. I'm not going to stop until I get my vengeance. I don't sweat Hernandez. Never have, never will. Hernandez sweats Morgan. So TNA management came to me and asked me, would I like to fight Hernandez in a steel cage at Victory Road? It was music to the Blue Prince ears. I would not want to be trapped inside a steel cage with Hernandez. Steel cage match. Former tag team champion partners, they're finally going to have their showdown. There will be nowhere to run and nowhere to hide when the blueprint Matt Morgan faces Hernandez in the brutal confines of the steel cage. Final pieces of the construction of the steel cage for tonight's big matchup. Our showdown at Victory Road being put into place. Checking on the cage door, make sure it's stable. And now it's time to turn Big Supermax and the Blueprint loose. You've got to win this steel cage match by going through the door, climbing out over the top. First person whose feet touch the floor, victorious in this steel cage bout. That's a nasty structure, too. You hit that metal, you hit those steel posts. Not a fun way to spend a Sunday night. How about the pre-match comments from the Blueprint, Matt Morgan? that he doesn't sweat Hernandez in the least. Doesn't seem like that's been the case for the past month or so on Impact, because every opportunity that Morgan has had to confront Supermax, sort of put his tail between his legs and well, run. Hey, look, you don't know. I mean, I, let's, let's face it, Matt Morgan's a, a, a very, very uh, excellent competitor, and he might be just picking his spots. Oh, you know, maybe the spot is now. You know, we've, we've been selling the fact that Hey, listen, Supermax is going to have Matt Morgan trapped in his steel cage. Hey, there's the flip side of that. True. You know, Supermax is going to be trapped in that steel cage with Matt Morgan. Someone's going to be trapped in a cage, that's all I know. They're both trapped in the cage. Two guys. It's time to find out who wins at Victory Road. Well, let's do it already. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is a steel cage match with escape rules. Introducing, first of all, from Fairfield, Canada. He is the Blueprint, Max Morgan. Seven feet tall, 300 pounds of the Blueprint, Matt Morgan, making his way down the ramp towards the steel cage, and it's not often that Morgan goes into a matchup. Taz, where his opponent, well, he's not exactly of equal size, but I would say equal strength. It's going to be oh. really a test of power between these two. I think that, I'll tell you what, uh, I think that Hernandez might have the power advantage. Obviously, the height advantage goes to Matt Morgan and the arrogant advantage. But Matt Morgan, you know, look, he's, he's a hot dog. He's very conceited. He gets in a match. He's, he's got a certain swagger about him. I personally like that about this competitor. Oh, this guy can get it done, man. He's got a great upside, does Matt Morgan. Let's see how I hand this fans right now against the blueprint. Introducing his opponent from Houston, Texas. He is Supermax Hernandez. Talked earlier about the revenge factor for Supermax Hernandez. Taz, take us inside. 
inside his head one more time. Can you be too fired up, too hell-bent on gaining revenge? Can that negatively affect your performance in a match? Yeah, I think it can. I, I think that if you are if you are too fired up and you are too focused on maiming and destroying your opponent, you can make mistakes. You can jump the gun and, you know, there's a bigger, bigger margin for error. You've got to keep your head. It looks like Hernandez has got his head together here. He didn't jump right at Morgan, but Morgan tried to get out right away and never turn your back on your opponent. You know, sort of the M.O., though, we've seen from Matt Morgan Whoa. in recent weeks trying to escape right off the bat. But being sent from one side of the cage to the other, and then Morgan turns it around, shoots him off into the corner, and then there you see the quickness of Hernandez as he moves out of the way. And, oh, this, oh, the, the, oh, the key here, you know, anytime you're in a cage, in a cage match, when the opportunity is there, watch this! Wow, oh, wow that was nice. Incredible agility for a man his size. Yeah, with ease. I mean, he's an awesome athlete as Hernandez. But when you're in a cage, you want, in my view, you want to try to utilize the cage. The cage is a weapon, and you want to use it just like that. You got him sandwiched. He's on the apron is the blueprint, Matt Morgan. Oh, man, look at this. Look at this. Look Full at this. Speed ahead. Oh, God. Squashed him right up against the side of that unforgiving steel. Measures, stalks, comes right at him again, oh. and that time... Ooh. Morgan, one step ahead. Well, very intelligent competitor is Matt Morgan. Yeah, you talked about the arrogance advantage. Pretty cocky look on his face, pretty happy with how he was able to avoid that onrushing and charging Supermax. Well, he used his brain. He realized that Supermax was, you know, he drilled him with two shoulder blocks into the cage. Supermax was a tad overzealous, and he paid for it. And he paid for it again. Look at that. These cages, I'm telling you, these steel cages, the metal, the steel, they are just merciless. You can see there's very little give to this cage, Taz. As no, yeah, you, just, you just see someone near 300 pounds yeah, it's, it's being a, thrown with this kind of authority into the side of the cage, well, and there's just no movement, there's no give. Yeah, it's a tad stiff. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it is. I mean, you want that thing to move a little bit, you know, maybe so you don't feel like you've gotten ran into a steel brick wall, which would be weird if a brick wall was made of steel. It'd be a steel wall. <laughs> But you can see that uh, Hernandez is feeling those few shots into the steel. There's another one coming. Oh, my God. Nasty. Just a wicked attack by Matt Morgan. Complexion of the matchup has turned totally in favor of Morgan. As you can see on the back of the blueprint, the blood trickling down. And that just uh, further drives home the point. Had to be where he was on the apron there and got sandwiched between the ropes and, and the steel cage as the blood flows down the back of Morgan. He turns with a discus clothesline and decks Supermax. Yeah, well, Morgan realized that Hernandez was, was attempting to build a little momentum towards his side, towards his favor. Matt Morgan's smart enough to shut down Supermax. Super, I'll tell you what, Hernandez, I'm moving too much. Like hey, might, here. Might, might want to get, get climbing. Yeah, you're right about the back. You see the blood on Matt Morgan. But Matt Morgan... You take a bow and do you blow kisses to the crowd or do you exit through the door or out oh, the top? See, that's what I don't understand. I mean, uh, Morgan, you talked about his conceit and his arrogance, but I get an opportunity to win a match there. It's in control. Matt Morgan's in control here of Hernandez. Very familiar right and left elbows. A series of shots in the corner. And oh, yeah, don't, don't count out uh, Hernandez. Very tough, very hard-nosed competitor. See what I'm saying? You can't sleep on this guy. Oh! oh. <laughs> Giant boot, a la the carbon footprint that time as he caught Hernandez while he was up on the, on the ring ropes. In the corner. Just, he, he was defenseless there. Yeah, he could not even defend himself. You're right. And both these men, former tag team champions, used to be good buddies. Now, Matt Morgan saying bye bye. I don't know why he's obsessed with saying goodbye to everyone, but just leave, Matt. You got the win here. Yeah, foreshadowing that he's going to escape Oof. the cage, waving to the crowd, but then has to go back and get in another shot on Hernandez, as you mentioned, his former tag part. Matt Morgan just, he wants people just to be impressed by him. I mean, he's asking the crowd, should I go this way? Should I go that way? Just go. Well, that's the simple way. 
Door opens. Matt Morgan gonna be victorious here. Remember, both feet have to touch the ground. That's not the ground. He's got all the rings. He's halfway home. He's having second thoughts, Taz. One can only presume that he's not satisfied with the beating of, of Hernandez here. You can see blood on the head of, of, of Supermax. Yeah. To be correct, we are being told that both feet have to touch the ground to win or the ramp. Or the ramp. Continuing the assault. Morgan drapes Hernandez now over the middle rope and oh I see what he's up to. Oh my Put him God, between yeah. the ropes oh, so that he can oh. Oh. oh that's that's tough to watch. Man. Raking his head Just his malicious. face across that steel. A ruthless attack, and that's how you gotta be. Like it or not. Matt Morgan bringing it big time. Look at that. He's trying to open up that wound on the head. He's just bloodthirsty. Oh and so proud that he shows off the blood yeah. Yeah. of Hernandez to the crowd. Well, he's just, um, Matt Morgan right now is in a zone where you want to be. He's feeling it right now. He's feeling confident. He's showing the ruthless side of himself. I'm telling you, I'm predicting that this guy, Matt Morgan, can win this thing anytime he wants. Not satisfied with the beating that he's given Hernandez to this point. Had the opportunity to escape by walking out the door. Oh, man! Oh, you can see the eyes of Hernandez just lit up after that clothesline. He, that just fired him up. Another oh, one. He's fired up, all right. Cheap shot by Morgan. Matt Morgan calling for the... Oof! Well, he's going for that carbon footprint. Big shoulder block by Supermax. And there's those eyes we talked about. Hernandez in the zone, Mike. All about revenge. But wait a minute. I'm gonna take him up. He's seven feet tall. Oh He's 300 pounds. And it was just too much. I think he might have been going for the border toss I, right there. I couldn't tell him if Morgan went to his eyes or if something happened there. Like, it didn't look like an just grabbed his eyes or something. Maybe Morgan I grabbed him. Really I'm tell. not sure. Couldn't see it, but I, you saw that he was gonna try and take him up for a border toss, but just too much. I thought maybe Hernandez, uh, maybe, maybe he lost his. Got a little dizzy, losing some blood and getting his head smashed to the steel cage. Oh! Able to get out of the way. He's gonna take him up oh again. God. Oh, he lost it. Almost had it, couldn't get it. But the landing was nasty. Almost drove him down power bomb style. Hernandez signaling, signaling that Wait a minute. Uh, this is it. Gonna escape the cage. He's going the hard way. Yeah, gonna climb up and over the top. Not like that, not taking the shortcuts. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? No, oh come on. Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. From the top of the cage? This guy's huge. No way. Talk about crashing and burning. Wow. Well, I, I admire Hernandez for that attempt, but that might have just cost him this match. That was a sick landing. How high up? That'll be close to 15 feet. It's the ultimate case of high risk and zero reward for Hernandez well, Matt, as Matt, Morgan rolls out. Matt Morgan played possum great. He didn't move one bit. Now what? We went over that. The T-shirt that he brought down that was tucked into his trunks and has brought out a pair of handcuffs.
Well, this is all legal inside a steel cage. More or less anything goes. You kind of can see the agenda that's uh, that's in Matt Morgan's mind. It's pretty simple. He's you handcuff him. Just hook him there. And handcuff him to the ring ropes and then escape, right? Yeah, pretty simple. Not going to be able to, to take you down as you... Oh, man. It's a one arm one man right now. And Hernandez, if he just fell from 15 feet to boot. And you know, the position there of where, oh. he, where he handcuffed Hernandez takes out the possibility that he could go right out the door. Well, Matt Morgan... Going to have to climb over the top, and Hernandez... Yeah. No, no way for uh, him to, to escape or I fight back. And yeah, you, you're one step ahead of him. You can show just us... Being a little cut. Oh! Supermix just busts through. Oh! Busts through the cuffs and then dives oh. out the door. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match, Self-centered, arrogant attitude of the blueprint Matt Morgan cost him. He had the match won. But he was hot dogging on top of the cage. Superman somehow, someway, busted through, got the win. And that arrogance comes back to haunt the blueprint. Matt Morgan as Supermax Hernandez gains his revenge at Victory Road with the win in the steel cage match. We're gonna go back. We're gonna take a look at the highlights from the steel cage showdown, Taz. Well, whenever you have a steel cage, as we pointed out, it's a merc merciless structure. It's a vile structure, and you're gonna get some nasty physicality. And we had that. You see shoulder first, right? Right there, head first goes Hernandez. Hernandez took a beating in this match. What a kick. Big time beaten by Matt Morgan. Matt Morgan could have won right there. Put the other foot on the ramp, he would have won the match. But Matt Morgan wanted to punish Hernandez more. Hernandez was trying to go for his border tosses, couldn't get him. I thought maybe he exerted too much energy, and then that. 15 feet, crashed and burned, nobody home. Well, Hernandez was done there. Matt Morgan had this thing won. Hernandez explosively. Possibly through the door and gets the win. Morgan thought he had the system beat. Not the case. Referee Andrew Thomas raising the hand of the victorious Supermex Hernandez. We're going to send it to the back. Christy Hemi standing by with the man who's going to face Jay Lethal next. We're talking about the Nature Boy. Ric Flair, you're about to face Jay Lethal. The whole world is watching as this young kid from Elizabeth, New Jersey is about to make his dreams come true by facing you and possibly defeating you out in the ring. Sometimes I think you're blonde. <laughs> by possibly defeating me, Jay Lethal, do you know what he's done? He has made a career decision that's gonna send him so far back, send him spiraling back Back to the future. Ric Flair is the reason there's a sport called pro wrestling, right? Yes, right. 39 years of being the man here at TNA, the Nature Boy. Woo! Looking as only I can look. We'll walk that aisle again. Style and profile. Jay Lethal in turn be standing in the middle of that ring. He'll say, Oh my God, what have I done to myself? That's what you've done. You have pissed me off. I hate showing off, but tonight, woo! I'm going to be Nathan. That's right. I'm going to take you, Jay Lethal, and I'm going to smack you around so hard, you're going to go home to your mama and say, Mama, I need to be back. On your breast, breast feed me back to health. That's how bad you're gonna get beat up. You do not mess with the nature of Ric Flair. This is a Sunday night. I should be in a hotel somewhere, drinking red wine, making love to a beautiful woman. Instead, I gotta go out here and sweat in Orlando. In Orlando, I'm gonna sweat. 60 minute man all night long. Whatever you want to say about Ric Flair, you know one thing for sure. He is the greatest wrestler that ever lived. Woo, 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 woo.
You know, Taz, when it comes to Victory Road, in my opinion, this, this showdown between Ric Flair, Jay Lethal, it's going to be the most emotional match of the night. Dirtiest player in the game, all of a sudden the most PO'd player in the game, and no one's gotten under Flair's skin like Jay Lethal. Well, it's a rare in-ring wrestling appearance by a legend. Let's face it, if you like Ric Flair or not, or, or, or the way he conducts himself, it's a rare, awesome experience to witness a legend like Ric Flair, a Hall of Famer wrestle. But I'll tell you what, Jay Lethal, it's well documented. He's idolized Ric Flair since Jay's a young kid, but that's gone now. You know, Ric Flair kind of crossed the line a little bit, I guess, in Jay Lethal's mind in regards to Jay Lethal's family. Some of the things he said about Lethal's mom, what he's done to his brother, I know you want to talk, so I'll let you. Couldn't agree with you more. We we're talking about the emotions, first of Ric Flair. Then the emotional aspect for Jay Lethal, to me, centers on Ric Flair making it so personal. And that's what Ric Flair does. I mean, that's the, that's being a vet. Look, you heard the man just say it. 39 years in the game. Wow. It's a head game. He's going to get, he's already in, in my view. He's in Jay Lethal's head. He's in his head. And, and, you know, Flair might be right. When this thing's about to start here, and Jay Lethal looks across that ring, and he sees the guy he idolized, the guy he wanted to be, the nature boy Ric Flair. I, myself, never had the opportunity to wrestle Flair. I wish I would have, but then again, I'm glad I hadn't, because I probably would have lost. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, he's a legend. It's a huge moment. If Jay Leaf will keep his head in the right spot, who knows? He might get an upset. It's not going to be easy. Ladies and gentlemen, it's up next at Victory Road. The nature boy, Ric Flair, returns to the ring against Jay Lethal. The nature boy, Ric Flair, a 16-time world heavyweight champion. Jay Lethal, the youngest champion in the history of TNA wrestling. Idolizing Ric Flair since he was a boy, Jay Lethal thought imitation was the greatest form of flattery. To be the man, you've got to beat the man. In the world you want to survive in and be something in, you're standing in front of God right now. From the bottom of my heart, I meant no disrespect. You want to be Ric Flair? You want to be in front of me? Imitation is not the greatest form of flattery when you're trying to be Ric Flair. There's only one. Not taking it completely as an insult. Low blow and then the knife edge chop from Lethal. And he's got Flair in position to go for the figure four. Is he going to do it? We're going to reform the four horsemen. Only we're going to call this new group Fortune. As far as I'm concerned, it looks like the horsemen were here. They took a dump in the ring and they left that. You can't be me. You can't do me. And I'm cutting you off right now. Woo! Hey, don't you start that with me. Flair, prove he's still worthy of the title, the dirtiest player in the game. I think that's Jay Lethal's brother. This your brother, huh? This your brother, huh? This is a sample of what's gonna happen to you. Rick Rhodes, you are the shot at me. Remember that the day you're brother when you get to business, will be the saddest day of your life. That's the problem. When you deal with Rick Flair, you never know what he's gonna do. Woo! <laughs> Ric Flair at Victory Road, I'm gonna rip your heart out. You gotta wrestle me. Me, Ric Flair. You don't belong in my world, much less this ring. You're gonna look your God in the eye and you're gonna get your ass handed to you. God, God, your God, God. These two are on a collision course as the Nature Boy laces up the boots once again for his first pay-per-view in over two years. A rising star. A self-proclaimed wrestling god. The Nature Boy Ric Flair looks to turn one man's dream match into a nightmare when he squares off with Jay Lethal. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing, first of all, 
from Elizabeth, New Jersey, Shay Lisa. How about that? On the back of Jay Lethal's ring jacket, you see, he's just living the dream, the chance to face Ric Flair. You know, Lethal grabbed me earlier today and he was telling me, Taz, listen, man, I'm wearing some red and yellow out here in honor, in honor of the immortal Hulk Hogan. Because Hulk Hogan made this match. Hogan put Lethal in this match with Flair. That's a show of respect from Jay Lethal. Well, it's the Hulkster. And now, introducing his opponent from Charlotte, North Carolina. He is the Nature Boy, Rick Flair. Taz, you said it best just a few moments ago. A very special in-ring appearance by Rick Flair to highlight this Victory Road pay-per-view event. There's nobody like the Nature Boy. They broke the mold. That might be a good thing, some <laughs> hotel boss might say. <laughs> no, but all kidding aside, there's only one Ric Flair, man. And uh, look, he, less, like I said, he is a legend. He is a Hall of Famer. He is Mr. Credibility. He's Mr. Wrestling, bottom line. Jay Lethal's got to look past that. Jay's got to look at him as another opponent. It's just where I was headed with my questioning for you. As far as Jay Lethal is concerned, can he show Ric Flair too much respect? I, I, look, you and I both know Jay Lethal personally, and he, he's a respectful guy. I mean, that's his nature. You know what I mean? But lately, the past couple weeks on Impact, especially where Flair's been poking shots at his family, we're seeing a different side of Jay Lethal, more of an intense side. He needs to bring it out in this match right now. No question, the experience factor, the big match factor, also heavily weighted in the favor of the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. The youth, certainly high-flying ability, goes on the side of Jay Lethal as they lock it up, and here we go. Well, listen, you know, you, you know, you look at someone like a Ric Flair, I mean, salty, cagey veteran, I mean, 39 years, and that's not just 39 years in this, you know, as a wrestler. That's 39 years, you know, I mean, how many world championships and being a top dog, you know? Uh, but... If Jay Lethal can keep this match at a faster pace, that could hurt Ric Flair. I mean, from a cardiovascular standpoint, let's face it, Jay Lethal's a younger guy, as you said. Although, if you think back through the years, who has been better when it comes to that cardiovascular conditioning well, no doubt. than one Ric Flair? Who has been? I was just going to say, who has been right. in more 60-minute matches than Ric Flair through the years? That's very true. But that wasn't yesterday. With you. And that's no disrespect to a guy that I idolize yep. in Ric Flair. It's just the fact that it's 2010. That's what you're saying. We're going to find out about that experience of Flair and certainly the emotion of Jay Lethal. Oh. Whoa, whoa. Wow. Right now, Jay Lethal is cooking on all whoa. cylinders right there. Running clothesline, deposits Flair outside. Well, I guess that uh, Jay Lethal is showing that side that I was saying hopefully comes out of him. That intense side. Doesn't seem like he's idolizing Ric Flair too much now. This is, so, this is Ric Flair here. Ric, Ric Flair wrestling his pace, trying to slow down Jay Lethal. Again, a veteran maneuver that's working. And that's really the key. We talked about it earlier. It's dictating the pace. If Flair is able to do that, it's advantage nature, Boyd. I don't think there's whoa, 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 any whoa, whoa. question as he gets brought into the ring with the high vertical. 
Lethal gets it rolling and off the drop kick. Oh, you know, Jay Lethal, I'm a fan of yours, but you got to hook a leg, if not two, with someone like Ric Flair. Whoa, look at that missile. Rip. Missile drop kick, big time. Caught him, cover, two. Well, it's forcing Ric Flair to kick out, and look at that. Old school right there, thumb to the eye. As soon as Jay Lethal started to get something going towards his side, boom, thumb to the eye, slowed a man down. Dirtiest player in the game gets one in early. Does it so quick, out of nowhere. He's done it for years in every match, and it still works. Signature knife edge chop. Drops Lethal in the corner. One shot with that knife edge and another. <laughs> That thing doesn't miss its mark right in the sternum. Bam! Look at that. And that old expression about lighting up the chest of Lethal. Ric Flair leaving his mark on Lethal with the chops. The short punch. That time, Lethal able to block. Oof. Comes back with the chop. I found it a little bit... <laughs> a little funny to me when Ric Flair in his interview earlier tonight said, you know, I don't like to brag. Really? <laughs> really, Ric? <laughs> Whoa, 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 looks a little punchy at this point. <laughs> there it is again. Smooth as silk, slick Rick right there. Baby. Hasn't lost his timing? No, no, that, that's there. And in terms of the success of this of, of Flair, yeah. when he goes to the corner, what would you say? Yeah, well, he's, he's probably, probably 0 for about 6,000 on this. Right now, let's see here. Jay Lethal from the top rope. That's a top rope superplex. Watch it. Whoa! Wow. That is not just a superplex from the second rope. That was from the top rope. Loads of impact on the back of the Nature Boy. Flair not moving much. Lethal senses that he can go high risk. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The moonsault. Smart of Ric Flair. Rolled in. You roll in to avoid getting kicked in your ribs or something like that as a man's doing that moonsault. So, yeah, he misses, he crashes and burns, but he doesn't hit you. A That's little a great point. Yeah, it's a little nuance that most people don't notice. He doesn't roll out, he rolls in towards the corner the guy came out of. It's part of that experience factor that we talked about from the outset. And now we're going to see if Flair can parlay that experience edge that he has into a victory and. Oh! Stopping. Uh, going to school now. Right to the knee. You know the game plan, Mike. Oh, I can see it from here. We've seen it for so many years as the crowd trying to get lethal back into this matchup at the same time showing respect for Flair. But he's trying to set Jay Lethal up for a potential submission with the figure four leg lock. Well, our live audience here are torn. Between Ric Flair and Jay Lethal. Speaking of tear, I mean, it's a good way to tear apart a ligament in Jay Lethal's knee, stomping on it about 30 times. Totally concentrating on the leg and knee of, of Lethal was Flair with the offense. The referee Earl Hebner trying to tell Flair not to kick him while he's in the ropes. There's no love loss between Hebner and Flair. <laughs> Chop block. Another signature move, but another move that's executed to perfection by the Nature Boy. Well, this is where the Nature Boy is just at his best. He's just, you know, pick apart your body systematically. He will take his time, pick his spots, not make mistakes, and don't do too much. But what he does is effective. You could just see the look on his face as he was circling lethal, that that was his exact game plan. The systematic destruction, as Taz talked about. There it is. it's going to lead to the figure four leg lock and he caps it off. Wow. Ring positioning. Right in the looks middle. pretty good. You gave it a hell of a run, Jay. I think you're done, kid. Lethal's run of success, which has taken him to the number seven spot in the TNA Top Contenders rankings. There His player is. uses the ropes for, for that extra bit of leverage maybe coming to an end at this point. That's a lot of pressure on a figure four, especially by Ric Flair. Get a little more leverage, as you said, Mike. Referee's trying to check on Lethal. Figure four hurts like freaking hell, I'm telling you. Especially after Flair worked on that knee that long. 
You see referee Hebner relaying the information to Flair that Lethal is not going to submit. Says no, and that time Hebner saw Flair using the ropes. He'll break the hole. Earl's going to try and, and is successful in well. We That's know up. how P.O. Yeah, well, Rick is. I told you these guys don't like each other. I mean, Hebner and Flair. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 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 Watch this quick roll up. One, two. Boy, Earl Hebner wanted to Flair, count yeah. three so bad there. He went <laughs> he went count right, count left. Flair still hot at Hebner. <laughs> Well, that was smart, though, even though Flair did not get the victory on the figure four. He didn't get the submission victory. But what that does is that eliminates the high-flying game that Jay Lethal can bring. He takes out a wheel of Jay, Leth of Jay Lethal, and Lethal can't fly around that ring and do some crazy stuff. Great, Lethal, great point that it limits Lethal's offensive moves, and at the same time, it sets him up to potentially put him in that figure four again. The he got him like, he's like fish hooking him, isn't he's he? He's got fish hooked his mouth. That's just street style right there. Just disrespecting. Flair showing no respect for his opponent for Jay Lethal. And look, everybody knows Ric Flair as being slick, Rick, style and profile, and Learjet and all that deal. Fine wines and everything and hot women. No one talks about the ruthlessness that Ric Flair has. Mike, you know, you've called tons of this man's matches. Many, many through the years. Uh, you know, and I have not as many as you with Flair, but he's a ruthless competitor. In the exchange of chops, Lethal getting a couple of shots in, but really Flair having the better of it. But boy, you gotta like the guts and the courage of Jay Lethal. All heart. Jay Lethal, all heart. Able to duck the back elbow. Oh! Leaves his feet and catches Rick with a flying forearm. I think that surprised Flair. Caught him in the head. Follow-up shot to the side, wow. and then the chop is lethal throwing everything in the book at Flair. Watch, oh, watch the hands back. Oh! I think, I think uh, Rick Flair thought he was in the ring again with the great Muda back in the day. <laughs> Hand spring elbow. <laughs> now, those were some classics, huh? Yes, sir, they were. I'll tell you what, man, no matter who wins this thing, you got to tip your hat to both men, especially Rick Flair. This point in his career, he's still going, man. God bless him. But lethal. Hey, that's almost shades that is of the nature boy. Oh, and you know that's just getting under Rick's skin even more. Outside in shoulder block. Gonna go sunset flip in. Oh no! Well, we need, oh, we need the big black X on the screen. Put the X on the screen for God's sakes. Yeah, just wouldn't be a Ric Flair match. Sometimes, well, time, hey, sometimes in life you gotta show your ass. <laughs> Oh. That poor guy there, he's not sleeping tonight. <laughs> well, here we go, hooking in that sleeper, Ric Flair. Smart Oof. move by Lethal as he drops down. Flair's head makes contact with the top turnbuckle. Oh. And Lethal springs from the middle rope into a cross body. Flair is getting drilled here, and look at Jay Lethal. Waiting for the right positioning. Oh, drops oh, wow, down with knee. all of his weight right across the legs and knees. Oh, man. And that's going to take away the effective, effectiveness of Flair if he thinks that he can go back to the figure four for one thing. Oh, look at this, look at this. That's exactly what we saw Flair doing. That's yep. a page out of Flair's book. Wait a minute. He's going to drag Flair out to the middle. He's going to try and put on the figure four. He's going to try and beat Ric Flair. With wow. his own signature move. Well, I'll tell you what, that's an ambitious test. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a ballsy move right there, in my opinion, by Jay Lethal. I like that moxie. I like that attitude by Lethal. Can Lethal get the win here? You've got Flair fighting through the pain. He just oh tapped. my God, you can't Flair just tapped. What? Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match, Jay. Oh my god, I can't believe this! Historic victory for Jay Lethal at Victory Road! Well, you talk about living the dream! Talk about an upset! When you talk about emotions as the close-up on the face of Jay Lethal as he's overcome here with emotion as he just That's defeated that. the man that he idolized and he just beat Flair. Oh! oh the hell? 
just beat Flair with his own move, the figure four leg lock, and Earl Hefner is thrilled well, yeah. to raise Lethal's hand in victory. Jay Lethal, I, listen, congratulations to you on the greatest victory in your career. It has to be. Lethal just beat Flair. What a roll. Jay Lethal is on in TNA. Hulk Hogan made it happen. We're going to hear from Jay Lethal. Hey. Hey, Mom! I did it! That one was for the family of Jay Lethal. Sending out his best wishes to his mother. Wow. Great moment. Great, Great moment. moment for the celebration. Now let's hear from another of RVD's three challengers later tonight. We're talking about Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy, you are about to face the monster abyss and two of your friends, RVD and Mr. Anderson. What is your strategy going into tonight's match? Christy, my strategy is real simple. I'm going to keep this victory road hot. All the creatures, all the enigmas are going to fly high with me tonight as the new TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Yours truly, the charismatic enigma. Yours truly, this life. Jeff Hardy got a game plan for the world title matchup later tonight, but now tag teams take center stage. Two of the absolute best teams in the world competing to be the champs, and we're gonna break it down for you because back in mid-May, back at Sacrifice, Motor City Machine Guns earned number one contender status. They won a three-way over Beer Money in 3D. And then after the band was stripped, of the TNA Tag Team titles. Beer Money Incorporated victorious in the recent Team Championship Series was contested on impact. Now after three plus years as a team here in TNA, is tonight the night that Chris Saban and Alex Shelley finally become World Tag Team Champions? Or will Robert Roode and James Storm do it again as four-time tag title holders? The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the vacant TNA World Tag Team Championship. Introducing, first of all, making their way to the ring, the team of the Tennessee Cowboys, James Storm and Robert Rude. Beer Money! You know, Mike, he said something a moment ago about both of these teams here in Beer Money and the Motor City Machine Guns two of the greatest tag teams in the world. Now, some people might think that's an overstatement by you, and I think say to those some people that you're idiots. Because that's, that's not an overstatement. I'm telling you, beer money, Motor City Machine Guns, this is going to be something special. Some great matches in the past, right or wrong. No question. Just great chemistry amongst these teams. I am a huge fan of both these teams. I don't know who's leaving here with the gold, but it's going to be awesome. I think I can predict that. Agreed? Easy to go out on a limb and predict that this one is going to steal the show. And it is their opponents from the Motor City of Detroit, Michigan, Alex Shelley, Chris Saban, the Motor City Machine Gun. No question, before every impact, before every TNA pay-per-view, when Taz and I are talking about certain elements to a show, different matches on that show, there's always that one match, Taz, yeah. that we talk about anticipation level for the announcers is gonna be high. And I think I can speak for you when it comes to Victory Road. This is one of those matches that we were really looking forward to. Absolutely, and I think it's been a great show thus far and a great card, some great matches. And this one here, I think this one's gonna be off the hook, as the kids are saying. Well, about five years ago, it's kind of an outdated statement now. I don't know the new statement, I'll figure it out. Someone tweet me. Or tweet me, whatever. What a chance this is for Saban and Shelly to take that next step in their career. And you can reflect on this. It's just that difference between being so close and finally climbing that mountain 
and being able to tell the world that you're the world champions in whatever division you compete in. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's what you're here for. If you do not want to be the champion in whatever division you're in, then what are you here for? You want to be the top dog. You know what? Sometimes, yeah, it's tough as hell getting to the top. Then at times, it's tougher to stay at the top. So we'll see what happens. You know what I mean when I say that, right? I read you loud and clear. Loud and clear. Start it off with Alex Shelley and the Cowboy James Storm. A substantial size advantage for Beer Money Incorporated. When it comes to overall experience, though, as a team, even though Beer Money's been the three-time TNA World Tag Team Champions, I think you'd have to go with the guns. They've yeah. been together longer as a team. Yeah, I think that's uh, uh, that's true. I also I, I agree with you that obviously there's a size difference that Beer Money's a bigger team. But I think you got to look at quickness. No question. You know, uh, that the quickness is in the corner of the guns. You know, and uh, sometimes it's, you know, there's a lot to be said for the quickness. Factor in the speed, the agility as well of Chris Saban and Alex Shelley. And well, we'll see what Beer Money can do when it comes to more of a power game as Shelley connects inverted style with the atomic drop on Storm. And well, that, oh, quickly snaps nice. off that head scissors. Well, that's the thing that's just so impressive. Whoa, whoa, about Quick the, leg sweep. About the machine guns, you know, Shelley and Saban, they are just pinpoint accuracy. They do not miss many maneuvers. That's why they're so successful. And how important are quick tags always keeping the fresh man into this match going to be as this TNA well, World Tag Team title bout unfolds? When you're facing a team that's more, you know, just a little bit more fleet-footed than you are and, and uh, probably has a little bit more cardiovascular stamina than you, like the guns, would have, I would assume, have over, over, over beer money, you got to make frequent tags. And Shelly realized that. That's why he got his partner in there as soon as possible. At the same time, when it comes to Storm and Rude beer money, you've got to presume that they want to get the guns over to their side of the ring. They want to cut off the ring. Yeah. Well, and they want to use that well, power to point, and that strength to their advantage. That's what just happened there. I, I thought that Robert Rude was going to make a tag to Storm. Speaking of tags, they would just tag Rude in the face with his boot. And then Shelly oh. catches him from the outside with a shoulder block. Flips right in across the See, back. This is what you don't want. Whoa, Look speaking of across the back, right up the back of his own partner. Out of nowhere. That takes Storm out of play. Now the guns can concentrate on Robert Rude. Oh! Well, that's what the guns are so good at. Just hitting you from every angle in the ring. Misdirection maneuvers. They hit you out of nowhere with stuff. Beautiful flurry of offense by the guns. Gives them the edge as Rude's rolled into Shelly. Motor City Machine Guns probably got to be the best professional team ever to come out of that city, no? You think? Yeah. I'll tell you what, right there at the top. You're a Tigers fan. <laughs> That's why I said it. Oh, oh. I got you. I was talking just wrestling alone. Oh. <laughs> Didn't know you were going further than that. I was going further. Quick well. double team. Let's see if the guns can get the win right here. Too only on Rude as he's able to escape. Yeah, now, you know, tied his turn here a little bit. Now maybe, maybe the machine guns now. We'll have some frequent tags, and it will cut the ring off. We thought that beer money would do that. The opportunity is at hand right now for the guns. How about oh. that leapfrog? Right up the back of his partner goes saving the extended oh arm of Rude as they drop down with the weight. Well, that, that doesn't hurt as much as it just disrespects you when a guy's more or less tap dancing, <laughs> you know, like uh, Mel Torme. He wasn't a tapper. Mel but Torme? Like, whatever the tap dancers are. Wow. <laughs> Busted that one out from about 50 years ago, and... Begging for a tap we weren't dancer. even close. I don't even. I don't know my tap dances, but right now, we're well, maybe going for a German stole. Oh, tag! Shelley's the legal man right now. Oh. Guns with the quickness of the double team. Saban going to try and get the pin and the win, but it's Rude in to help out his partner Storm. Sometimes you got to do that, even though it's illegal. You got to break up that cover. Oh, crack! Oh, but Rude just got drilled, and speaking about getting drilled. Matchup for the vacant. TNA World Tag Team titles. Winner to take the gold. Here comes Storm right at Shelly. Quickly puts on the brakes. Free leg of Shelly kicks him away, and then... Uh oh oh, oh, oh! oh! Man. Yambag City right there. Whew. 
now with, with Shelly wow. in trouble. This is the chance. We talked about it earlier. The cutting off of the ring. The quick tags for Storm and Rude and Hebner insisting on the tag. When he had turned around, he saw that there wasn't a tag made from somebody outside the apron. And now it's legal, and now it's Storm and Shelly. Well, this is what, you know, Beer Money, I, I feel, needs to do is just ground the machine guns. Ground out of Shelly. Don't let him get to that vertical base, because that's where Shelly is comfortable. Moving, movement, movement. Because the more the guns fly, the more the level of confidence rises for Chris Saban and, and Alex Shelly. And the more effective the guns are when they're moving, when they're flying around there, as you said. That's the way you ground them. The nice. double team suplex. Ooh, there. Double vertical. James Storm, Robert Roode showing their dominance in this matchup for the vacant TNA World Tag Team Championship belts as all of a sudden the guns, they're in a bad way. They're on the defensive. And the beating of Alex Shelley continues. Yeah, the control definitely in the side, on the side, I should say, of Beer Money. Corner to corner, Roode sends Shelley, oh, elevates no. him up into the air. Gut and buster. Have gut yeah. buster across the knee, drags him out to the middle, hooks the leg, and goes for the pin and gets two. A gut must buster is a great move to use late in a match like this, and now a rear gut wrench, because what that does is it affects the man's breathing. You know, you're hitting right, right there in his gut, it affects his breathing, he's sucking wind right now. And a rear gut wrench right there, rear, you know, just really pulls, pulls, the, yeah, pulls the air out of you. Yeah, doubly effective, not only the pain from that gut buster, but also the ability to lose that wind, as Taz pointed out. And now, as we anticipated, Beer Money would cut off the ring and try and keep the guns on that side. Once they well, take over the matchup, once they take control, and that's exactly what they're doing. That's Tag Team Wrestling 101, and it's effective, and now Storm utilizing that rear gut wrench it's a move you don't see many guys use in a match. It's an underrated maneuver. It's very effective if you can pinpoint the guy's ribs a little bit early in the match. And especially effective because of the previous moves that have been inflicted on Shelly for the past several yeah. minutes. And you see Shelly broke the grip. He was trying to break the grip at the point of his elbow, and it worked. He broke Storm's grip. Ah, a little shenanigans right there by Robin Mo Rude. And Shelly tries to fight back, gets the boot up for Storm, then the elbow for Rude. Showing a lot of heart right now. Doing Alex. everything within his power to get out of that corner. Shelly needs to tag Chris Saban in the match. Sidesteps Storm, who crashes into the corner. Got a long way to go to make it across to tag in Saban. And Shelly, hands oh. and knees. Drop to hold. Oof! Sets up Saban to drop kick Rude in the face from the apron and then rolls through for the tag. Well, that's exactly what the guns needed. Clear to feel right now. You can just see Saban's going to be just flying around. Look at those forearms. Quick go behind oh. on Rude. Oh. Shoves him off into his own partner. Oh! Turns into the kick and then. Oh, oh my God! Rolling oh DDT on oh. Rude after he oh kicks Storm out hurt. of the way. Oh. But oh. Storm drops down with the elbow onto his own partner. How Robert Rude didn't break his neck, I don't know, but thank God he didn't. Check that out the was... slingshot. Stop on the apron. Oh, jeez! Just punted the head of Storm. Put that one through the uprights. Springboard! Oh, that clothesline! Pin. Go! Here's one. Here's two. Guns just that close to being TNA World Tag Team Champs for the first time. Tell you what, right now, ladies and gentlemen out there in TV world, you will not find a tag team match to the level of athleticism you're witnessing right now, I feel. Anywhere in the world. Anywhere. This is phenomenal stuff. Shelly out of the corner has Rude while Saban connects with the kick. Which way will the tag team titles go? It can go anyway. Oh. Right now, it looks like the machine guns had some control going. They had a plan, but then Storm pulled Saban off the apron. Oof! Shelly on top of Rude, but Storm, Storm so close to make the save. Couldn't get the three. That's being a great partner. That's being a cohesive team. Oh! But Shelly dropped down neck first across that 
top rope slingshot style, and now it's up to Saban to try and fight back against both members of Beer Money. Yeah, Chris Saban. Look at that. Oh, my God. Snap it off. Hurricane Rana for Storm. Rude charges in, catches both boots in the chest. Yeah, didn't get all of that, but... Oh, 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 oh got caught. With the snap off the Hurricane Rana again, but he's oh going to pay God. the price. You're going eye of the storm here, That's Mike. exactly it. Oh, Whirly bird style move with the eye of the storm and then the crash down. Just whiplashes your neck, you know what I'm saying? Look at that back sweep. Quick back heel trip, catapulted up to Storm oh. to the double knees. Here's the pin on Got Shelly. Him. New champs! Beer Money, just that close. We are seeing the guns and Beer Money pull out everything they got here. It's about the tag team titles. Both these tag teams taking it to the limited victory road like we anticipated they would. Referee Brian Emmer. Yeah, Beer Money trying to set up for their patented yeah. double team move, but the guns one step ahead saw it coming. It's a championship rap match here. Referee letting some of this double team stuff go on. Storm with the quick burst out of the corner takes down both Saban and Shelley. Been very, very physical. A lot at stake here. From Storm, maybe got over there a little slow and oh! Went for the kick, but it's blocked by Saban oh. and then Shelley. Shelley just catches him Storm. with the boot. The hell is this now? Oh! God! Springing cross body. Saban connecting on Storm outside on the arena floor. Oh! <laughs> Shelly and Rude exchange. Shelly lands on his feet, but yeah. catches the elbow as a result. Wow, slingshot cross body by Rude. You that takes see. Saban out. Oh, what well, you could tell. Oh! Never saw Shelly coming. You could tell we're in the fourth quarter here. All men throwing caution to the wind. Everybody's just leaving it out there, baby. You hear the respect from our live audience. For all four of these men, look at this. Wow. Bodies flying all over the impact zone at Victory Road. TNA World Tag Team titles to the victors. Well, I concur. <laughs> Keep your eyes on Storm. Oh, got a little beer bottle in hand. Ooh. Crawling around the ringside area with that, that glass beer bottle in his hand. I don't think Shelly rip. What? Oh! Shelly crotched up on top. Oh, oh it goes to spit the beer in the face of Saban. Instead, it goes into the eyes of the referee who's been blinded. Yeah, inadvertently. I don't think that beer spit was meant for the referee. Check out this double team. While what? Saban holds Rude, Shelly connects with the top rope cross body. Gotta get the ref, gotta get the ref. Here comes Earl Hebner from the back. Earl dives in, counts one, counts two. Got both. Did he get it? I don't nope. think so. Look of frustration on the face of Shelly tells me no. Senior referee, Earl Hebner coming down to ensure that we get a victor here in this matchup. Well, that's how important this is here for the tag team titles. He realized the other referee, coincidentally his son, that beer spit in his eyes. Oh! Quickness, speed, overall agility of the fearless. guns. How about fearless? Here we go. High risk off the top. Cross body, roll through. Shake it last week. Look at beer this. Beer money on top. Oh. Rude can't wow. believe it. I can't believe it. Fought his, fought his momentum was yeah. going to carry him through. Well, we saw that. On top uh, of the pin. impact, the same exact thing. Sure did. Frustration big time for Robert Rude, who's usually pretty calm and cool. High stakes here tonight, baby. High stakes. Yeah, you never really see Rude show his emotions like that as the slaps from Shelly punctuated with that big right. Spine buster coming. Oh, counter. Went for the double R S spine buster. Standard switch right there. Oh, Saban going to take out the legs. Oh, my 
God. Shelly connects with the kick, then the double team kick. Oh, watch this roll, roll up. Here's one. What there's two. What's what? legal? What? Well, we, with the, with one member of the guns with the pin, and one member of Fear oh, Money. Wait, 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 let's try. Well, Fear Money's music's playing. That doesn't mean they won. I mean, with a soup. Well, who got the? What does it look like to you? Well, don't ask me. We're gonna have to find out. Hold on. What? From well, Brian Hebner was the original referee. Senior referee Earl Hebner, his father came down. Let's see if we got a replay coming up. Oh, Let's good. see if Let's we can see tell. See if he can watch this. Referee's down two. Well, the, the cadence of the count was identical, wasn't it? Well, the father and son, for God's sakes. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. TNA senior official Earl Hebner has ruled since there is no decisive winner, this match must be restarted. Yes. Yeah, that sounds That's good a to hell me. Of a call, Earl. Good job. That is a hell of a call. Let's settle it, guys. Here we go. Just like a little moment of a pause. Hit the pause button. Now you unpause, and it's still going. And immediately after the restart, Storm and Rude, beer money, immediately on the guns. Well, referee Brian Hebner trying to get control out here. I, I tell you what, seemed like Brian was a little upset with his dad for coming out here, but he had him. Brian was blinded. By the beer, that is. Storm oh. crashes in the corner. Oh, my God. God, he's got to be out. Guns quickly turn it around after Beer Money had the edge well, you at see, the outset of the restart. Mike, we just saw in that wide shot there, senior official Hebner is on the outside. Watch this thing. Earl Hebner. Cross body off the top. Shelly on for the pin. Three oh. kills. Ladies and gentlemen, the winners of the match. Machine guns. Hey, beer money. No shame in that. Awesome, awesome outing by both teams and both officials. Let's take another look here how this thing ended. The match was restarted by senior official Earl Hedger. Right there, that neck breaker into the splash. After all the physicality sustained by all four men. At the end of the day, our new tag team champions, the Motor City Machine Guns. Do it either way, Mike. That match did not disappoint, I'm gonna tell you that. Our expectations were high. Guns get the win. Tag team champions for the first time, and up next, Kurt Angle's mission to take out the top 10 continues tonight in Victory Road. The Guns do it. If you didn't already know, I'm gonna step back, take a little time off, kind of regroup. I'm gonna miss you guys while I'm gone. But when I come back, I only have one goal in mind, and that's winning the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. I have everything to lose because my first loss could be my last match. It's moments like this that makes me understand and realize that when I come out here and bust my butt in the ring, it is worth every minute of it. See, when I first started in TNA, I was one of the elite. I was the best. Kurt Angle is no longer one of the elite. The elite. The elite. The elite. The elite. The elite. They said, could this be the return of the most charismatic, spectacular, hand clapping, foot tapping, piss slapping, bleeding attire, always on fire, pope, that is the angel of the day. I have everything to lose. Well, mark this day on your calendar, because the pope said it, daddy, then it's done. My first loss could be 
my last match. Last match. At 80 percent, I still have the charge, the obligation, and the responsibility to be the pope of this congregation. Kurt Angle is just another name on the TNA roster. TNA roster. I'm not new to the game, Daddy. Pulls true to the game. I'm in it to win it. To win. At 80 percent, I am still kicking on all. What can I do to reinvent myself? I have everything to lose. To lose. And I am going to wrestle each and every one of the top 10 TNA superstars, starting with number 10 and ending with number one. Number one. Pope is here for one reason and one reason only. That's to state my claim. I'm not backing out of this thing. If I wanted to come out here, look you in the eye, face to face, man to man, I wanted to shake your hand, and I wanted to say, may the best man win. I have everything to lose, because my first loss could be my last match. Last match. I must, I must be victorious. Be victorious. The Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle attempts to climb the TNA World Heavyweight Championship rankings against the Pope, D'Angelo De Niro. Pope is pimping. Well, here comes the Pope. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. In it is thing, making his way to the ring. The Pope. Hello, Nero. I guess there's always an upside when you're in the top 10 rankings. Shows what you've accomplished here in TNA in terms of one loss record. Your career one loss record as well. Online voting taken into account with Dixie Carter, Hulk Hogan, and Eric Bischoff put together those rankings. But when you're ranked number eight, like the Pope D'Angelo De Niro is, You've got a big target on your back because your opponent, Kurt Angle, yeah. has promised that on his way to the world title, he's going to take out everybody in that top 10. Well, Kurt Angle, 13-time world champion, Olympic gold medalist. He's on the hunt. He's on the hunt. He went through 10-9. Now he has eight. See if he can get it done. Introducing, making his way to the ring from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Weighing in at 234 pounds, professional wrestling's only Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle. The Olympic gold medalist is on a quest. He started last month, sacrifice, defeating number 10, Kazarian. Victim at the number nine spot was Desmond Wolf on impact. And now, number eight, the Pope, D'Angelo De Niro. The next opponent for Kurt Angle, who has promised us that if he is not successful at any point in defeating every person listed in the top 10, starting at 10 all the way down to number one, He's promised us that he will walk away from TNA. Which that in itself is crazy to me. But, you know, that's Kurt. That's Kurt Angle putting pressure on himself like no one else can. And that's, I feel, why Kurt has been, why he is an international world-class superstar. I mean, that, that's basically it. The pressure the man puts on himself. Pope can go. Ain't no doubt about that. This is going to be tough. It's going to be tough for the Pope. We heard Angle say on Impact recently that that self-imposed pressure that he puts on himself, putting his career at stake, enables him to perform even better, Taz. Uh, that's what I'm saying. That's what Angle's all about. You know, I've had the opportunity in my career to compete against that man, Kurt Angle, several times, and it's not easy. I mean, you have to compete at a higher level when you wrestle Angle. You're in there one of the best of all time. That is a future Hall of Famer you're looking at in that red, white, and blue. Angle back to the basics, immediately grounding and taking down the Pope. 
that front tight face lock, and then all of a sudden the quick reversal into the hammer lock by De Niro. Well, that's, yeah, that's what Pope's about. Pope, Pope don't sweat nobody. He's got a lot of heart. He's got the congregation behind him. Not many guys that could turn that chin lock into a hammer lock and switch on Kurt Angle like Pope just did. And then the second switch, almost equally as impressive, off the quick snap yep. there headlock by Angle, where Pope was able to turn it around on into a hammer lock. And yeah, you see, uh, I was going to say, as Kurt was in that hammer lock, he was posting with his hand on his head. Looks like he just had his head down, but he doesn't. He's actually getting more leverage for himself. Nice side headlock takedown by Kurt Angle, a basic maneuver, but done very well. Got and an then, arm trap, too. Notice yeah, how his arm's trapped in there, that, that, That's really the key, isn't it? Because yeah. now you've not only got the head, where yeah. you can position that around, but you take away also the ability for, yeah. for, for Pope yeah. to fight back. So well, you, that. you call it trapping a wing. You know, you're trapping a guy's wing, his arm, whatever you want to call it, and that's... Actually, Kirk could turn this into a submission here. How about the way that Angle has his weight position here, his legs? Well, all of it's, his... It's, it's just... It, it's done to perfection, it's isn't whole it? whole tree right there. I mean, it's all of Kurt's body weight on the face and jaw and throat when they were down of the Pope. Imperative that the Pope got back up oh. to his feet, which he does. But Angle able to drop him with the shoulder block and then quickly leaps over. The Pope ready, takes him over with the high hip toss. And again, back to that hip oh. toss. And now going to work on the arm. Or no, going to go for a hip toss again. But it was blocked. Series of standing well, switches here. Ends with the Pope catching him with kicks. Well, I like what Pope did after those two hip tosses. Did something. How explosive was that? That many guys don't do. As he hip tosses the man and he goes down, he has a two-on-one, which means both hands, two hands on one wrist. And he controls the man's arm that way to apply another hip toss. You don't see many guys do that. A little thing right there that Pope did that helped him get the advantage on Angle. That's what we talked about earlier, and nobody picks up Look at this. those Look at nuances this. of the game like my broadcast partner, Taz. Well, thank you very much. But a show of respect here by the Pope. You don't see that much neither, huh? I like that. That's pretty cool. Got to love the mutual respect between these two, especially competing at this level. Yeah. You don't think Kurt's gonna <laughs> go easy on you, though. You know, and look at that. After to show respect, Kurt boots the man in the gun. I like that. And then power oh. bombs him <laughs> you direct, directly back of his head first into the corner. And Thank you for the respect. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Pope, Pope's a giver. He gives in life. It's about the congregation. He's a man of the people. He's, he's too nice. He just showed it. <laughs> Angle stands directly over the Pope. Immediately picks him up right by the head. Wow, nobody snaps him off like that. The quickness of that snap suplex leads to a cover in the lateral press. Well, I've explained it, you know, many times and how, how Kurt is able to peel off those suplexes so impactfully. It's just his hips. It's all in the hips. The way you pop your hips into your opponent and back arch real quick. It's that motion, it's that, yeah. that quick movement that enables you to get that torque and power behind exactly. the move. Comes with years of training and getting your lower back strong and your glutes, your butt, whatever. Getting those muscles strong. Uh, it's not arm strength, it's all lower back strength and uh, glute strength. Nobody knows that better than you, Taz. What are you trying to say? I got a big S. <laughs> <laughs> oh! I'm going to put you over for <laughs> your suplex ability and Thank you immediately you. <laughs> take the low road. Angle, quick cover. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Immediately right yep. back to the pin. As quickly as the Pope can raise his arm and his shoulder, Angle slams it right back down to go for another well, pin attempt. Tenacity. And not just a pin attempt. Angle driving his forearm across the man's cheekbone. True. You know, again, little things. Oof. Backdrop suplex. Drops him directly down on his tailbone. You Boy, the, the, the accumulation here. Uh, of, of these suplex moves, and it's, it's just going to wear down the post. Well, Pope's worn down now. Look how Kurt sits through that. Sits through that rear choke, a rear chin lock. See Kurt's, uh, his legs, how they're flat on the mat. He's got all his weight on the throat, neck, inside of the head of the Pope. That right there is the perfect way to apply that tight rear chin lock while the man's down. All of his weight, Kurt's weight on the head. You see how effective it is as the Pope at this point He's looking for a way to escape. See, see how he's Kurt, taking everything into consideration. Where does he go? Well, he's got to uh, get up back up to his feet, obviously. I, I think Pope wants to try and get this thing out of a wrestling match and get this thing into a fight. That's If I'm Pope, that's what I would try to do. Oh, look at that. Pope. Right, he's got himself a little sleeper back there. Mike oh. caught Angle coming off the ropes, locked him in the sleeper, but then you see the quick reversal by Kurt. 
Yeah, he's got that tough, tough clasp, his grip. Look at that. Nice How counter about that by the Pope. Pope. Give Kurt a little taste of his own medicine. Indeed. Might be the turning point in this match. Whoever gets to a vertical base first might get some advantage. Kurt has been bringing more of an offensive, has had more offense, I should say, than the Pope, I think, thus yeah. far in this match. No question. To this point in the matchup. Well, Kurt's got that sense of urgency. You know, he said it. You pointed it out. Sure. If I lose, I'm done. And he put that on himself. So, you know, you could potentially be looking at Kurt Angle's last match here. Exchange between the two. Pope gets the better of it, dropping him. Close line back elbow. Off the atomic drop, inverted style. The series of elbows just repeatedly yep. to the top of the head. Pope's bringing it right now. Bringing a lot of different maneuvers. Kurt realized it, slowed him down. Uh oh, oh boy. Wow. Lock him up. Yep. Release him overhead. Off the belly to belly. Here's the cover. Here's one. Here's two. Yeah, once Kurt clasps his hands and you get caught in there, click, click, boom, you're gone. Good luck. Yep. You're headed over the top of Kurt Angle. And you don't have an option. Angle stalking the Pope. The European uppercut rocks him and sends him directly into the ropes. That time, Angle. Oh, nice counter. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. the move. Let's see if the Pope can take advantage of that mistake that you don't see very often from Kurt. Look at that. Oh, nice. Into a German suplex. Still got the grip, Taz. Yeah. Pope, uh, Pope hanging on to that grip. Trying to take a page out of Kurt Angle's book. Nice block. Oh! Back heel trip, close line at the same time. Into a, a cradle. 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 That's not just a leg hook right no, there. No, cinched up, didn't he? That's a cradle. First, that outer leg sweep of the close line, which is called an Osoto Gary. It's like a judo or jujitsu sweep. Into that tight cradle pin. Kurt able to kick out. Kurt's hurting. Pope went for those double knees. Could have been that DDE, that D'Angelo De Niro Express, but Angle moves out of the way. Catches him with one suplex, and now it's Kurt's time. Wow. Yeah, well, I got a funny feeling. Kurt's got more than two German suplexes in mind. Yeah, we're at two and counting. Angle still maintaining that hold. Well, it's a hat Three. trick. That's yeah. a hat trick. Trifecta cover, leg hook, far side. Nope, just two. Both men battling. You can see the fatigue in both athletes. An angle not only performs better, in my opinion, when he's I, under yeah, pressure, but also when he's fatigued. Yes. Because that's when Kurt Angle really shines. I, I could not agree with that statement anymore. That is so true. Proved it at the Olympics in 96. Winning the gold medal with a broken neck. Oh. And, and there you see Speaking of neck. the target of the Pope is the neck of Kurt Angle. That's a good game plan by the Pope. Pope's got to try and get on a hop here and get moving. And hit whatever he's gonna hit. Uh oh, see, that's Talk what about I'm how quick he can react despite the fatigue. That's Kurt Angle. Belly to belly from the corner. Here's the follow cover. Here's two. See how Kurt, again, another little thing, how he hooks the arm almost like an overhook to get them in on his back quicker instead of just, you know, throwing them over. Little things. Little things are important. Trying to go for that ankle lock, Kurt is. Free leg of the Pope is used to kick Angle away from his famous submission move. Well, bad intentions on the mind of Kurt Angle. Here he comes! Oh. Shoulder first, right into the steel. Post goes Angle. Well, Pope had that. This could be the DDE as the knee pads come down. Kurt's in position to receive it. No, drives both wow. knees into the chest. Got the leg hook. This could be it. Oh, God. Could have been it for sure for Kurt. Could have been done. Now all of a sudden you sense that when it comes to confidence, it's on the side of the Pope. I would, I would definitely... Uh, Did you see the body language I of De Niro? I totally agree. He's starting to get that swagger back. He is. He almost had Kurt beat there. Float over by uh -oh. Angle. Angle slam! There it is. Drilled him. Here we go. Here's two. Oh, Whoa. Oh, 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 man. You see a little bit of a little frustration by Kurt Angle there. 
Thought he had the Duke right there. Thought he had the win. Here we go. Straps come down. Oh, nothing fancy about that. Just locked on that ankle lock. Patented submission yep. hold applied. If Kirk can get the, if he drops down and gets the legs and, and grape finds around that leg and Octopus is that leg. But look at the heart right here, the intestinal fortitude of the Pope. Trying to get to that bottom rope. He's got to grab it. And Kurt, almost to the point of toying with him there, because just when it looked like the Pope was going to get the ropes for the break, Angle drags him back out. That shows the control that Kurt has of the entire body with just the angle. Oh, got just him. Out of nowhere. Got him! Got him! Here we go! Woo. How the hell did Kurt kick out of that? Sunset flip. Nobody there. Pope nice fighting. Block. Blocked it. Pope. Drop down. That's the move. One, He's get him. two. Wow. Ankle, ankle, ankle. What a reversal. Look how quick he is Sensational. On the mat. Sensational there it is. reversal. He's got that thing hooked up. That might be all over, man. Pope's in deep, deep, grave danger. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match. Hurts. Awesome job by both men. Great match right there. Very, very physical. Congrats to Kurt Angle. He One did it more again, notch up there, buddy. One more notch is exactly right. There it, it is. Started, Seven. Yep. Started with ten Kazarian. Nine Desmond Wolf. Number eight, the Pope. We're going to find out this Thursday on Impact. Who number seven is? We'll have the new rankings announced Thursday night, Spike TV, when we get the word from Dixie Carter, Hulk Hogan, and Eric Bischoff. Stuck right there for both men. Awesome matchup. Congratulations to Kurt Angle and the Pope on an awesome effort. To the back, Christy Hemme and our TNA World Heavyweight Champion, RBD. where you're about to face one of your friends, Jeff Hardy, and a man who nobody can really trust, Mr. Anderson, and the Monster Abyss, who is walking around backstage with a two by four, riddled in nails with your name on it. Now, how do you plan on not only being victorious, remaining the champion, but surviving this match? Well, Chrissy, Mr. Anderson, I don't trust. Jeff's cool, but I got no friends out there tonight. They each individually want this, and it's mine. As far as that monster abyss goes, well, there's really only one way you can prepare for a weapon like that. And that's to plan on getting a hold of that two by four with nails in it and inserting it where the sun don't shine. So abyss, you can worry about how that's gonna feel coming out, and I'll worry about remaining world champion. Rob Van. Damn. On a night when we have had some absolutely terrific matches, it's time for the big one. Time for our Victory Road main event. It's the TNA World Heavyweight Championship matchup. Well, you can see right here, I mean, between the three challenges, the largest one is Abyss, so big time size advantage. And let's face it, Abyss is unstable. Unpredictable is Jeff Hardy. I mean, Jeff Hardy can just hit you from anywhere in the ring at any time. And you heard Van Dam say that the champ just said he don't trust Anderson. How could you? Here's the world title bullet points in the tail of the tape when President Dixie Carter, managing partner Hulk Hogan, and Eric Bischoff couldn't agree on a number one contender. Abyss, Jeff Hardy, Mr. Anderson, all equally ranked at the top. And while this match is every man for himself, think of the interesting subplot, because that underlying tension between Anderson and Hardy, and meanwhile, monsters on the loose. Definitely a case of against all odds for the defending champ. Not only three challengers, but RVD can lose even if he's not pinned or submits. Van Dam recognized as a true fighting champ, but this uphill struggle, may even be too much for RVD.
comes to Mr. Anderson, one of the three challengers tonight in our TNA World Heavyweight Championship matchup. I think all the doubters, all the people who question his intentions, have been proved wrong to this point. Yeah, well, you know, I, 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 I agree. I mean, listen, many of us have doubted Anderson's agenda for sure. I mean, he's proved many of us wrong, but I don't know. Van Damme's got me thinking. He just said he don't trust him. Talk about not trusting somebody. I mentioned that this man is unstable, he's dangerous, he's violent, and he's got his girl right there, that weapon, in hand, which as I pointed out earlier tonight, that thing is not legal as magic. Jesus, I think he added more nails to that thing since Thursday. Came from the Monsters ah. Workshop. Abyss pounding those nails as we saw it on Impact directly into the board. And how about when he was swinging it around Thursday on Impact? Yet Mr. Anderson lined up to take a shot and he just ripped that turnbuckle pad right off the corner. That thing that is, is just, that's it's a weapon. I mean, you know, I, 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 how do you think of something like that? What kind of a demented, twisted, sick SOB thinks of something like that to construct? You gotta be whacked. We still have no idea what he's been talking about for the past month or so, always referring to they. They are instructing him to do this. Yeah, who's they that? are instructing him to do that. It's another one of those things. questions that we haven't answered. scheduled for one fall and is a four-way matchup for the TNA Heavyweight Championship of the World. When the bell rings, the man in charge, Mr. Brian Hebner. And now, ladies and gentlemen, live from Universal Studios, Orlando, Florida, it's time for your Victory Road main event. Introducing, first of all, standing in the corner to my left, he weighed in this morning at 230 pounds and comes to us from Green Bay, Wisconsin. This is Mr. Anderson. Introducing competitor number two, standing outside of the ring, weighing in excess of 350 pounds, 
the monster Obex. Introducing competitor number three, standing in the corner to my right. He weighed in this morning at 232 pounds and comes to us from Cameron, North Carolina. He is the charismatic enigma, Chef Hardy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing Weighing in at 232 pounds and coming to us from Battle Creek, Michigan. He is the current reigning and defending TNA heavyweight champion of the world, Mr. TNA, Rob Van Tan. Well, that it right there is what it's all about. I, I tell you what, Mikey got four men in this match right here that all have big match experience. You can feel that big fight feel, correct? No question in the prize possession. Here in TNA, the World Heavyweight Championship belt that was displayed by our referee, Brian Hebner, will go to the winner of this four-way matchup. Quite simply, first pin, First submission, score it, become world heavyweight yeah. champion. You don't, that easy. Right, you don't have to beat, you don't have to defeat Van Dam to become champion. That's the thing. That's what I, I said this past Thursday on Impact. Rob Van Dam has to have his head on a swivel, which basically means pay attention to what the heck's going on around him at all times. Because if there's a cover or a submission, he's got to get moving. They this get moving. Looks like uh, probably pretty good strategy here. Trying to get the big man. The, uh, you know, the, the dangerous one himself and how unstable and unpredictable that Abyss is. So that RVD, Anderson, and Hardy going to work together at least against Abyss? Yeah, well, it's every man for himself. I mean, that might, this might be all good right now. They're just trying to, you know, what's the expression? Strange bedfellows, which I actually hate that expression. But I said it anyway. But it's that kind of deal right here. Right? Yeah. So far, so good in terms of this strategy from the three. Maybe a little disagreement here as to who's going to lay in the next shots. World Heavyweight Champion third in line, oh. and then Hardy comes flying across the ring at Abyss. Line it up for Anderson next. Just picking his spots. RVD. Oh, wow, that's a 350-pound monkey flip. That's more like Leads a gorilla. to an Anderson cover. But a gorilla, it's more like a gorilla <laughs> flip. <laughs> Can't get a win on it, can't get a victory on Abyss, and that's good for Van Dam. Sound move by Abyss to quickly roll out. Get a little safety outside, but we'll see how long that lasts. Here comes Hardy. Oh! Abyss definitely the target here in the opening minutes. You think? Well, it's, you know, I, whoa, 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 Anderson! Anderson Got tries to be an RVD, and you can't get much closer than that. Well, you heard Van Dam say, I don't trust Anderson. Hey, you can't that play just him. confirms hey. it. Hey, so what, man? You can't blame Anderson. That's the champ, man. Sheepish look on the face of Anderson, but of course, RVD knows it as well. Uh oh. Oh. Ooh, that was coming. Wow, rolls through with that kick right into the face, directly into the nose that time of Anderson. Spins back, drops the leg, and the roll of thunder action. Oh, oh motion that he was going to do it, and Abyss uh -oh, caught him uh -oh, from outside. Uh -oh, now, uh -oh, uh -oh. this is where it gets dangerous. When you've got Abyss outside the ring, this is his element, Taz. He can use everything from that steel guardrail, the side of the ring, the steel ring post. As long as he doesn't use his girl, that weapon, that two by four with the nails, which I don't know where it is right now, and that's a good thing. Well, with RVD crashed into that steel post, the focus here for Abyss. There it is. Is on Mr. Anderson and Hardy able to slide in from outside and from behind. Now they're going to pinball Abyss in between Hardy and Anderson. Uh oh, double goozle. 
They both might be going. Oh. Able to fight off the double choke slam attempt. Well, I thought the only way maybe you can get the monster down is double team. It worked. Combined weight, trying to take down 350, and it does work for Hardy and Anderson. Abyss slowly to his feet in the corner, and Anderson drops down to see if they can... Oh! oh. The old swerve. Trying to get him, trying to get him! Oh! <laughs> and then RVD in with that drop kick right into the well, face of Anderson. Van Dam had to save his own title again to reiterate. If Anderson would have got the win on Hardy, we'd have a new world champion in Mr. Anderson. It was a hell of a swerve by Anderson, though, wasn't it? Swerve, double cross, all of what you may, but it was. <laughs> oh! Free leg of Hardy connects to Van Dam. Look at Hardy. Oof. Plants the world champ off the front suplex. Quick float over into the cover and had that leg hook. Well, I tell you what, if you got if you got a handful of pride in you, that's a good way to become champion in a four-way match. Beat the champion. You don't have to, but if you can, go for it. And talking about making that World Heavyweight Championship. Oh! oh. <laughs> that kind of a title reign, something you can really brag about yeah. if you were to beat the World Heavyweight Champion Absolutely. in this four-way match. See how Van Dam was one step ahead of Abyss. Earlier, Abyss grabbed the feet of Van Dam when he went for the Rolling Thunder. This time, Van Dam took himself. I'm sure he took Abyss out, and then Hardy just took Abyss out. And now three down on the floor. Mr. Anderson up. Boy, Anderson's got to be feeling pretty good about this as he waits. Oh, no reason to rush into it. Second that Abyss gets back up to his feet. Anderson drops down. I think he caught him with like a double sledge. And everyone has just pinpointed Abyss. <laughs> Big time. See Hardy favoring his leg and holding on to his knee outside. As Anderson rolls back in, RVD headed back as well. Well... We'll watch Van Damme split leg. Look at that moonsault. Caught him. Moonsault to the back. That Rolls might him be over it. into the might cover. Be it. Hardy barely gets in, in in time to stop the three count. And Van Damme fighting from his knees. The champ with a series of rights. And that third one caught him flushing. Oh, my God. Wow, speaking of catching oh. him flush, <laughs> tell me about that kick. You've been there. Oh, I've been there. It hurts like hell. Poor Jeff Hardy blocked that thing with his face. <laughs> Man, damn, it's like he's got concrete in his lower legs when he kicks you. Trust me. Now he's got Anderson stacked up in the corner. Hardy down inside the ring. Abyss down outside. But Anderson's able to counter. Reversal and shoots him off. But yep. RVD catches him first with the elbow. Quickly Again. to the top, but then Anderson's there to cross him. Oh, you see him. how quick Van Dam. that's due to his flexibility. How quick he was able to get up there. But Anderson was able to shut down the champion. Right, you see Anderson... Gonna try and bring our world heavyweight champion back into play from the top rope, suplex style. Meanwhile, RVD fighting it off. Yeah, those rip shots right there. Look like now Jeff Hardy trying to help out Anderson, or maybe help himself to weaken the champion. Meanwhile, the monster is in the ring. And Abyss in, and you talk about a Tower of Doom situation. Oh my God, what the hell is this? God! I, mean, I guess it would be RVD that, that, that took the worst of that. But the way that the bodies are laid out all over this ring wasn't good for Hardy or Anderson either. Think, like of the, the, think of the strength as a miss yeah, that uh, got all that let's adrenaline. Take, let's take another look at this, Mike. Looks like all three of these men just fell out of a building. Look at that. Ah, oh, yeah, you're right. Van Dam caught all the way. Look, let's see. Bam! He got double vertical superplexed as he got pushed off by the Monster Abyss. And as we come back live, Abyss with the quick pin on Anderson, but not able to put him away. Abyss the first man up to his feet. And with the other three down, it's it's a case of where he goes at this point. Which one of the three oh, is Abyss going to target? Going for the champion. 
got Van Dam goozled around oh. the neck. Look at, look at that flexibility, how high Van Dam got There's nobody that. more flexible no. than him in wrestling. No, I saw him. I, I, all kidding aside, man, tell you something real quick. I saw him earlier today about 5 o'clock, and he was stretching out like crazy. And he's always been like that. He stretches out a good couple hours before the show, and that's why he can do things like this. That nobody else can do. Bring corner clothesline for Hardy. Quickly to the top, Oof. and that single leg thrust off the top is beautiful. This is why Rob Van Dam is a TNA World Heavyweight Champion. He's Mr. TNA. And look at Mr. Anderson. Wow. Wow. Just stopping Van Dam right in his tracks. And now with RVD taken out of play at this point, Taz. Advantage to the three challengers yeah, here. Well, that's a big problem for Van Dam. You know, because right now one of these guys can get a pin cover on the other or a submission. It's the big negative here for Van Dam. This is the problem why this type of match is not a good thing for the champion. Numbers-wise, favoring the challengers as Hardy is reversed and fired off into the corner. Able to get the elbow up on the Hardy's Hardy. quickness, that quickness. Well, the free spirit himself. The non-conformist is going to get the win off. Hardy is second away from being world heavyweight champ as Anderson comes flying in to break up the pin attempt. Well, Mr. Anderson has picked his spots very well during this whole championship match. Look at this. Wow, oh, got him. You imagine? On a bit. Get him. Mike Drabo stopped by Hardy that time with the drop kick. Every man for himself here. Yep. You gotta you gotta break up that cover. If Hardy don't, championship goes to, to Mr. Anderson. Gonna go Just twist. Fate. Oh! Oh, black hole! Wind him up. Power him down. Black hole slam. 350 on top of Hardy. No Two. Champ, he's got him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Anderson <laughs> pulling the referee Brian Hebner by the leg so that he can't count three. Everyone wants to keep that opportunity alive. Wait, Abyss could have been world heavyweight champion potentially right there. I'm not sure if he would have made that final three counter of Hardy. Oh, might have been able to get the shoulder up. We'll never know. But then Hardy from behind knocks Abyss to the floor. And our champion Van Dam, I believe he's still down around one of the corners of the ring. Yeah, we saw that close up and there. there he is. It is. You can Van see Damme. still in recovery mode, but he's just face he, hit the stage really hard, but Anderson blasted him. The Both, same time yeah. with the longer he's out there. The more the opportunity is for him to lose the title. Look at these two buddies here. It's like a damn hockey fight. <laughs> the rights and lefts and Anderson and Hardy. They just it just finally blew up right there. Well, competitive no, nature yeah, of these listen, two is what no, we're witnessing. No better time, Mike, when a championship is on the line, right? You know what I mean? That's it. Mike drop attempt this block. Big, real quick block. Yeah, and rocking elbows oh, as well. The fatal. That one's not going to work either. Another Drops counter, down, another yeah. counter, another Drops counter. Up the shoulders. What an exchange. Elbow shot by Hardy. Kicking Kisses Anderson yeah. in the back of the head. He's Jeff got him dazed. Oh, that's it. Twist of fate. That's it. Three seconds away from a new world heavyweight champ. He's going to go swanton, one would presume. Yeah, but the monster has entered the ring. We just saw him. Where is he? Swanton is nailed. But oh it my is God. a four way no, no, match. No, 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 no. Oh. Abyss stacks him up with a choke slam. Drive down. Abyss Let's on top. Go for the pit of the Five star frog splash by RVD off the top. But they stacked up the bodies there. I think Anderson probably got the worst of it being on the bottom of the five star. I think it might Van be Dam right. Rolls over. He's gets two. He gets three and he keeps the title. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match, and still, TNA Heavyweight Champion of the World, Rob Van Dam. Well, was, <laughs> there was some banging going on in that four-way. Somehow, some way, Van Dam is leaving Victory Road, still world champion. Still victorious. The odds were stacked, the deck was stacked. The numbers yeah, the, the, gave totally the, men, the men were stacked. They were stacked up. <laughs>
Anderson on the bottom. RVD hits the five-star frog splash. Anderson takes the brunt of the blow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The vicious attack from behind by Abyss on, on, on our yeah, world well, heavyweight champion, just as RVD was celebrating post-match. I think we're witnessing Abyss's disappointment and this just demented man. Lord knows what's going on inside that he, skull. Oh, no. Oh, no, oh, no, no. no. Not, not that. Not the weapon that he calls his girl. Don't. You the, gotta the, get help out here to stop him. Oh, that board that's just loaded with the nails. Oh, no. Oh, my God. No, oh, stop come him. On. Oh, come God. on, come on. Oh, my God. I mean, what would Just have happened? What would have happened if, if Abyss would have hit RVD with that sick, well, thank God sick he weapon? RVD, he's still the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. But who the hell is going to control this, this monster Abyss?